sometimes I'd walk through the door and be like, I don't even know what I'm doing. Like, you know, having all this like shame on myself. And then the next day I'd be like, guess who's 19 and earning <laughs> this much? Yeah, overarchingly, like the people that are the most successful I've met definitely have more of a superiority complex and insecurities, definitely. There's, there's no charging. rule book. Yeah, it's a complete gray area. There's no, you should be earning this. For an influencer, it's like, there's so many different variables. There's so many different companies with different budgets. Yeah. Happiness and also the message I'm putting out. Yeah. Maybe that's gonna help people like a little bit more than just mm. getting them on a path to like lose weight and whatever. Right, awesome. Welcome to the episode, first episode of the new podcast, Behind the Curtain. We're and I here today with Anna Archer, otherwise known as Anna Archer Fitness on the internet. Who I met through Max, who I went to school with, funnily enough. So what we met at like 16. Must have been sick uh, form. Yeah, yeah, it was sick form. Yeah, we were in the same form. form. Yeah. Yeah, no, no other classes. No, no. I no, failed no, everything nothing. and you passed everything, so that was the only uh, difference between the two, I think. I was scraped. Yeah. <laughs> I got like C, D, E and U at AS levels. Yeah, yeah, I flopped everything. I'm really dyslexic, ABC, I didn't know. I got, mm. actually, yeah. You got A, B, C? Yeah. I what? didn't know that. In my AS, I got C, D, E, and U. Oh, in AS, okay. okay I was no, in actual A level. I didn't know that. I yeah. No, I got oh, a AS, yeah. Oh, I completely no, fucked them. Did you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, AS. I had to retake everything. I, That's I got, why I got good. Man, I got booted off two courses. Oh, yeah, same. Yeah, no. And they yeah. asked me to teach English afterwards, and I was like, what? How, really? How did I teach English? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, right, Probably. we're seriously looking forward to this one. So we're going to dive into Anna's backstory and a bit about your childhood as well, if that was all good. Of course. We've run through a few lists of things we're going to dive yeah. into first. <laughs> Um, obviously, how you got involved in the world of fitness, first of all, how you blew up your social media, which was pretty recently, to be fair, as well. In the yeah, past, like, about, it's coming to two years now. Two years? Okay, awesome. And how many followers have you got now on social platforms? Um, like on Instagram, it's like just below 280, 280. 280,000. And then TikTok's like 1.2, 1.1. But I haven't been on it for about three months, but I will actually be returning oh. this week, next week, actually. Are you? Yeah, okay. I, I needed a break because I just... It was almost like the first platform that I really like pushed hard in. And when you do something for so long, I kind of lost my rhythm, lost my inspiration. And I wasn't proud of the content I was posting. And yeah. I was like, I need to come off it. Three months later, I now feel like, right, I think I can get back on it. Yeah. Um, because of basically bringing on a team. So I'm going to have like yeah. an editor to help me edit the TikToks and stuff. Oh, uh, so, okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. So coming back onto that. <laughs> yeah, we'll dive into all the behind the scenes aspect of stuff for sure in a little bit later as well. But yeah. first of all, we got a question I'm going to ask everyone. So let's say you're in a black cab. The cab is a total stranger. He's really chatty. Yeah. He's asking you what you do for work. How would you describe that to him? Oh my gosh, I go so awkward. I'm like, um, I do like uh, like fitness on um, social media. <laughs> like that's like, I don't know what else to say. Yeah. Obviously, if it's like an adult that I can't really be bothered to explain, I go personal trainer. Okay. okay. But I'm not even, okay. but it's just like, then they know what it is. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. obviously, if I'm up for that conversation, then I do. But I don't know. I just don't like the term influencer. Yeah, so gonna... I shy away from like, yeah. and then sometimes they're like, "Are you an influencer?" Then and I'm like, "Yeah, go on." Okay, okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. Billy absolutely hates when we get into black cabs because I am so chatty. <laughs> I will just continue the conversation with them. We're going on, going into many different topics, oh, and wow. he's just yeah. sat there like, "Oh my god, please oh. just shut no, up." Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. saying I, I like I, I don't really like going into that conversation. No, but they're all mildly racist as well. That's oh, one of the reasons why I hate yeah. it. Like, <laughs> this ends up being a horrible we conversation. Had some awful experience. In regards to racism in black cabs, so we won't yeah. get into that. Yeah. <laughs> but definitely agree when it comes to explaining to people what what even we do. We struggle sometimes in that kind of like, oh, so you do some to be IT stuff. To be fair, I was trying to explain it to Anna, and I was like, um, yeah, I was like, it's like they you? help like fitness coaches, and she was like, oh, okay, yeah, I was like trying to explain it to. Her. Oh, my mum still doesn't understand yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. No, my parents, yeah, they, they had no They're thing. Like, what are you doing? They've got no understanding whatsoever. Do you help people? Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, let's go back to the basics then. So do you want to dive in? Yeah, so I think if we just go back to the start, where you grew up, your childhood, school life, dive into a bit of that, it would be great. Yeah, well, there's definitely a lot, so I'll skim over it. But yeah. I was born in Belgium, lived there for two years, then moved to the Caribbean, Lived there for four years, and that's where I was like reunited with my dad. And then when I was six years old, my mum, my sister, and I we moved to England, and then basically been in England ever since. Um, and then yeah, that's when I like started school. So obviously I started in year one, so when you obviously start primary school, but just that little bit behind because we weren't speaking English yeah. as much or yeah. everything like that. Um, but yeah, and so my parents have been like split for quite a while. You know, they were split pretty much when I was born and stuff. Um, 
Yeah, I don't really well, know what growing else. Growing up <laughs> in the Caribbean while living there for a bit. Yeah, Amazing. no, it definitely was nice and it made me an absolute beach babe. Whereabouts? I was um, say. Aruba. It's oh, like a tiny little yeah. island. Yeah, it's called like One Happy Island. <laughs> um, and yeah, I went back there like every year till I was like 17. So it's definitely like second home to me, I'd say. Yeah, nice. Yeah. What about siblings? I have an older sister. Okay. Um, we were just, she was three years older. So it was just that like ratty sister relationship where lots of fights didn't get on and then I think that kind of put some sort of distance between us and then now well she moved to America she's she's sorry she moved to California when she was 18 yeah so she did that and she's been living there for like I don't know how many years now four four Four. yeah Yeah. is that a four or half sister Full that. sister. Yeah, full yeah. sister. But we're definitely not as close. Um, but yeah, I see her when I can. But obviously it's like literally like once a year, mm-hmm. if that. Okay. Yeah. And school life. How, how are you in school? Did you enjoy school? Yeah, I didn't like English, but I was like a little maths wizard and I loved science and sport. And yeah, I was quite class clown slash high achiever slash sporty kid. Like it was just kind of all round at everything. I was definitely just a people pleaser. All right, bragging. <laughs> yeah, just, you know, I'm a rounder. Yeah, <laughs> like me, but, but not like the most. <laughs> All right, you see, bloody hell. <laughs> but wasn't like amazing, at, you know, at any particular sport. Just like a little bit of everything. Yeah. And then went on to obviously GCSEs, and then for A levels, I did maths, chemistry, and PA. Okay. But I didn't actually end up taking maths completely because um, my dad passed away in my A levels year, so it kind of put like a massive spanner in the works, and I had to. I just couldn't deal, you know how hard like A-levels are, it's so yeah, hard, yeah. so I pulled back from maths, but I managed to pull through with my Definitely. PE and chemistry. So that's yeah. yeah. How do you find that, if you're happy to talk about it, how do you find that whole element of losing your dad as well? Because I've lost my dad. Oh, really? So, yeah, what two years you? ago. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. So how did you, like, how did you deal with that? How did you negotiate that? Has it happened or is it something that's just still... I didn't. I yeah. didn't deal with it. Um, it was very hard when we had a complicated relationship anyways. We... Um, saw each other like once a year I was always trying to please him and you know he loved me I was like his little daughter and whatever but then when he passed away there was so many unsaid things that you know I I didn't tell him my feelings I never confronted him I never spoke up to him which is why I always urge like have conversations with your parents because you don't know when they're going to go and then now I had to you know at 17 you don't really process it and that's when you know, within a couple of months, I went into depression for eight months, nine months, and then that went into an eating disorder. And that's when I started on Arch Fitness. I, I was in okay. the, I, I was literally in an in eating disorder, and I was posting fitness and stuff. And then, yeah, so it's now I'm at this point where it's like I'm able to look back at my life and be like, ah, oh, so the reason why I cry because I'm stressed out at work is because you never really actually, let's say, spoke up to your dad, or you never, you know, it's like certain things in your past that actually make you not feel good enough in the present Mm. so now I'm learning about how to deal with the grief um and trying to process it yeah trying to like talk about it and feel it because for so long it's like go a year without crying I'll cry once a year about him really yeah (laughs) I just I don't know how to like I'll cry that my t-shirt isn't comfy and I'll cry if like so, yeah. you know like oh he knows like yeah. you say like <laughs> heels are crusty oh, honestly yeah. I'll be like my toe <laughs> nail is crusty <laughs> you did a dirty there Max yeah. that's <laughs> horrible <laughs> and then uh you know big things and then yeah big things up. it's like mm, yeah not feeling yeah. anything okay that's interesting yeah that that's really interesting I'm pretty similar to be fair yeah I don't, I'm not particularly emotional about it but I did I did EMDR therapy straight after which What's really EMDR? helped it's you you put on headphones like this and you look like a nerd yeah and um you have this like it's a, a beat that goes back and forth and you get put into a state of like REM whilst you're awake so you're dreaming which is really weird it's like I suppose it's like a tripping but I've never yeah. taken drugs so I can't really comment <laughs> but yeah it's like that and then you go through trauma it's like the whole point of trauma generally in a session and you remove the emotion from it step by step wow. so it's painful as hell but it's really good yeah, wow. I thought it was really beneficial. But there was a therapist that I was recommended to and then did like six to eight sessions and there's only so much you can do really. You have to work on it yourself after that. Yeah. But it meant the emotion was removed from the situation. I could see it for as it was. Whereas my mum, my brother, the total opposite, in yeah. my opinion, like not in a harsh way, but they haven't dealt with grief. Okay. So yeah, it's interesting seeing how that kind of pans out as well from person definitely, to person. Definitely. Yeah, but it makes be... you feel like somewhat numb to it, which is weird. 
Yeah. It's a very weird thing. I'd be I'd be down to like yeah. try explore different things, but I think it sounds like the, a street. <laughs> it sounds it like what I do. Yeah. I think the part that I need to do is to actually feel that. You know, feel I need to feel that. I need to process. Yeah. I need to take it all in. Um, but it sounds I definitely want to try different things. You feel it at first, like, don't get me wrong. It's yeah, like, that's probably what I need, like a big, like, pool. Yeah, it's horrible. <laughs> like, I went, I'd always go on a Friday because I knew the Saturday I'd just be fucked. Oh, wow. I yeah. couldn't do anything. Yeah. I couldn't see anyone. I couldn't work. I, I couldn't get out of bed, really. Yeah. It was horrible. But then after that, it means that you could, like, recall situations you've been in or uh, situations with that particular person without emotion, which is really helpful. So you're still aware of it's kind of like how painful it actually would be, but you don't feel it, which is actually really nice. It's very yeah. interesting. Yeah. It was really good. I, I do recommend it for sure. But with that whole process then, so you're going through that through A-levels, yeah. but what introduced you to fitness then? Was it like, was that kind of an escape for you? Is that a bit of a retreat? Like, how did that work? I had honestly, well, my mum was quite like a health yogi mum okay. anyways. But yeah, literally since primary school, I was into, you know, I was doing athletics, I was doing gymnastics, dance, yeah. all the sports, karate, swimming, like literally anything. So it'd always been, I guess it was like an escape. It was my happy place. I was in flow. You know, I could go... I'd, I'd go to school and I would do gymnastics before school and then I'd do athletics at lunchtime. I'd have a PE lesson and then after school I would do like dance or gym for like two hours and it would just be like, I'm in my own world. I'm in creativity. I'm in happiness. And then when I came out of A-levels, it was like suddenly all my sports stopped. Because mm. in school you do so much yeah. in England, I feel, if you are into it. And it completely stopped. We went into lockdown and I'd always, I went to, the, started going to the gym when I was like 14 and obviously you can't yeah, go, so you not. can't get in the gym when you're 16 <laughs> or something. So I was going before and stuff. Honestly, I'd gone to the gym way before, like even the guys of my age were going, you know, and the guys start yeah, going yeah. they're like 15 and they started lift. I, I was there before, <laughs> like yeah, I was just yeah. in the gym. Didn't know what I was doing. Probably still <laughs> don't. Probably still <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, my workouts are so random. Yeah. You talk about that later. Yeah. yeah. yeah well, um, don't know that. But I forgot what I was talking about. Um, How you got into going to the gym. And yeah, so I just basically, I was always just into the gym. And I think what was interesting was that, so I was always into the gym, but when I had kind of gone into this eating, disordered eating path and I had lost loads of weight, I suddenly looked like I was, I always mm -hmm. looked fit. But I suddenly looked ripped. Yeah, like. And yeah. my friends went, Anna, you need to start a fitness account. And I'm like, okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I'm ripped now. And now it means I know what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. But it yeah. doesn't matter if you're a personal trainer, whether you're whatever body fat percentage, it's what you know. And I had loads of knowledge. I, I studied PE, I, I studied all of it. I loved it. But it was only until that I looked physically ripped and my friends being like, oh, yeah, you should start. It was it. Like so I did. Yeah. And it blew up. Because what's funny is people are so interested about everything if you look like or have something that they want yeah so if you're a very ripped girl in the fitness industry a lot of girls lean towards that like, oh i want to be super skinny i want to be lean yeah so they go so what happened was is a lot of people go i'll do what anna does i'll eat what she does i'll work out what she does and that's why i wrap this following up really quickly because anything i said and people are like i want to know what you do in your alone time i want to know everything and it was obviously quite weird at yeah. first I was like why do people care about me and I think that was it people just saw the body and then come with it but then obviously now I was able to reinvent myself when I did have kind of like a big crash and I managed to kind of pull away from making my body the image that I'm selling and instead it's what I say because I think yeah. that's more important yeah so definitely so what platform was that that you first blew up on? So I started Instagram and TikTok at the same okay, time, the just same like Anna Arch Fitness. And it was both of them working together. Instagram okay. was like your home, your portfolio. Yeah. But in order for people to get there, you, I had to use TikTok and a video would go viral. It would be sent out to all the girls in fitness because that's how the algorithm yeah. works. So then we sent out, everyone interested would press the little Instagram button on my TikTok, take it onto their followed and yeah. then be a follower. Yeah, yeah. So it was very much... They were bl blowing up at the same time, but TikTok was just literally pouring followers, engaged followers onto my Instagram. Yeah. yeah. When, when was that? What year was that that you August actually started? August 2020. Really? That recently? Oh, That's sick. It's really recent. So I'm assuming. Well, for most it's so people. weird because <laughs> for me, I'm like, that was ages ago. Like, yeah. I was like, I mean, I've, been yeah. on, I've been on Instagram since I was like 13. Well, Snapchat obviously yeah. before that, yeah. but Instagram for so long. Well, no, it's also a bit of context because like the coaches we work with, they've been on, you know, using social media for, yeah, years, for years and they have like 10K followers tops, generally. Yeah. Like, yeah. Went to like 30K in a month, you said, didn't wow. they? Yeah. In the first yeah. month. The first month really? was that. It was like brand new, you know, I didn't work with, you know, it was lockdown. You don't go meet other fitness influencers and, get their no. followers and stuff it was yeah, yeah. 
it was TikTok, it was Instagram, it was what I was posting, and I got to 30K in one month, and Gymshark yeah. was a month and a half. Do you feel like <laughs> the period of There's people lock- behind the camera right now are so angry. At that. <laughs> <laughs> They're crying. Do you, do you feel like the period of lockdown that that helped your following grow? Yeah, definitely. Everyone obviously Everyone's being at home. Everyone's on their home. phones. Everyone's on their phones. Everyone wanted to be into fitness. Yeah, and, and I think all creators, I think there was now there's a mix of there's more creators yeah, and there's people definitely. want to be on their phone less. So everyone is slightly getting less engagement. And there's yeah. a big thing at the moment. Yeah, we've all the influencers that. on there, you know, a lot of the influencers have like close friends so that you can just like almost pose for your yeah. other influencers, well, influencer yeah. friends and normal friends. And everyone's like, the last month, um, what's happening to our engagement? <laughs> no, yeah. Why is our views, like, why is everything so low? And it's like, it's very easy when you have an account that is under your name, whether that's Billy, whether that's Anna Archer, to think that the performance is a reflection on yourself and your self-worth. Yeah, if your yeah. video doesn't do great, it's not because of you. But I'm saying that, like, I don't take it. <laughs> yeah, you do take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Take it personally, don't you? Yeah, our video doesn't do well. I'm like, oh, my God, it's me. I'm awful. Like, yeah, what's going yeah, on? Definitely but understand. It could be thumbnail, title, algorithm, anything. So going back quickly, you mentioned that your friends were the ones who encouraged you to get onto yeah. social media and obviously create your fitness account. In regards to family, were they really supportive of that um, move? What were their kind of yeah. opinions on that? Were they aware? Actually, like, were they yeah. aware of you trying to do this? Or was I, it something which well, like, kind of... started pretty quickly. And then I remember, I'm like, mum, I reached 10,000. She was like, I've been trying to, I got 10 views on my YouTube <laughs> for the last five years. Like, she's a yoga teacher. So she's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. YouTube yeah. and... You know, she really struggled to get those like 10, 30 views. And she was like, 10, 30? I was like, mum, this video got a million. We were both in the same position. We didn't understand what it meant. Yeah. A, a video would get a million. Oh, nice. And it was only until we were at a festival. Yeah. Wait, you say. Well, yeah, we went to <laughs> just the festival at Arada and there was only, we were like, oh, I don't know how many people here. Yeah. We had only like eight and it, there was 12,000. But there was loads of... And then we, you know, if you go everywhere, yeah, and then yeah. You, like, see like a picture has got like 20,000. And, like, oh, 20, yeah. and I'm like, oh, see. 20,000 likes. And I'm like, but... If I knew every single person at that festival, like there was so many people. Yeah. Knew like, you. You'd <laughs> no, be yeah, like, what? Sorry, if they knew yeah, yeah, like, yeah. that's quite a lot, but you <coughs> don't actually understand what like a digital number is yeah. at all. Yeah, yeah. Did that impact you at all psychologically when you were going through that process of growth, which is rapid? Oh clearly? yeah, definitely. I, I just not understanding it. And then along with it is like this like imposter kind of, I don't deserve this. I don't really know what I'm doing, which is why I'd go like with flows of, oh, I shouldn't even do this. I'm not helping anyone. Like, I don't even understand what this is because I'd feel low in myself. But obviously, 12,000 people have even liked the video, yeah. not even watched. Some people can't be bothered to press the like. It's just a watch or something. You don't realise, essentially, how many people you're talking to. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. It's nuts. And it's such rapid growth as well. Yeah. Which we've worked out for years. But I didn't know any different. And then what caused that is that set my level. So I was growing okay. 30,000 a month for six months. Yeah. If not more. And I reached a million TikTok followers in six months, maybe less. So then I set that as what I should be doing. And obviously I've a year on now, yeah. probably grown 50,000. Yeah. And I yeah. lost probably like 80,000, more, more. I've lost so many people, but that's okay because I completely reinvented myself and of course that's going to happen. And And I think it's that part where it's like I had to accept it in myself that I want to, I don't, I, you know, if I don't want to be this weight loss person, I'm going to have to accept the fact that I'm going to lose people because they followed me for weight loss. Yeah. So, you, you know, that's something I could accept and knowing that it's not, it's literally not all about followers and yeah. Yeah. And when you were starting out, was there anyone in the space that you were looking up to when you were? You know, it's funny because <laughs> when I was, when I met Jim Shark, like the team for the first time, they said, oh, so who are your fitness inspirations? And I was like, um... I don't follow anyone. And they were like, <laughs> really? I was like, uh, You don't even know anyone. I don't know anyone. <clears throat> honestly. I'll say like what, in celebrity the... or like or something. It's just like, who's that? Really? Like I, sent, I sent a photo. There's like, you know, the, the Battersea uh, helipad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In yeah. Rome. And there was a girl. <laughs> there was a girl that was there and took a photo with a guy. And I sent it. I was like, oh, look. You know, Battersea helipad. And it's the girl. And anyway, she, she didn't say it like. I didn't really say anything. I, didn't, so I, was, I was like, oh, nice. It's weird. a helipad. Anyway, yeah, yeah. And I was like, you know who's in that photo? I was just like, no. It's like, it's Tom Cruise. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you know, and she was like, oh, that's why you sent it. She thought I was sending it because there was a girl in the photo. I was like, I was what? like, oh, my God, a girl you know was at the helipad? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was it's, like that. it's like Tom Cruise in the slap bang in the middle of the photo. So and you didn't she, know anyone No, so I literally don't know anyone. I don't know anyone. Just like, like, yeah. I don't really, like, not look up. 
But I just, I've never been that girl to like be crazy on Instagram and know all the influencers oh, or like. Interesting. I didn't know who Megan Grubb was or Whitney Simmons for a long time, especially if I'm in the fitness. Obviously now yeah. I know them, but for the fitness industry, that's quite normal. And yeah, so I, I guess I didn't have anything like that. It was very much just like what I posted. And I remember at the beginning when I was working with Gymshark, I was just posting like recipes. And if I posted a picture of my face, I'd like be like, mm, like a really like right, scrunched okay. up silly face. And they were like, Anna, do you want to try posting some mirror pictures in the gym <laughs> shop? <laughs> and, I, and my mirror pictures, and I sent like 20 to my manager, Sam. And he was like, um, yeah, these two would do. And I was literally like, mm, and like, oh, just yeah. like, so like, yeah. I just couldn't like do what the girls do. You know? And they just like pose really cute. Yeah, like, obviously now I kind of, like, I've worked yeah. on it, but yeah, like at the beginning it was so new to me. Like I just didn't know how you were supposed to do it, which maybe that was a benefit. So I was I just gonna did ask, it completely yeah. in my own way. So was there much strategy behind your growth? Or was it simply a case of you uploaded for sake of uploading and then it just started to snowball um, pretty quick? I figured it out quite quickly. I yeah. like I do have that mathematical brain, so I did kind of love it at the beginning. I was like, oh, I know exactly what to do. And I think I figured out what you had to do for TikTok before now it's like the TikTok normal to know you have to do a five to thirteen second video, you know, it's that stuff and make it engaging and don't make it long and and all the little things that like I just picked it up very quickly. Mm -hmm. So the, so I got my TikToks quite viral and I also knew that transformations do very well, but I, now I know it's probably not in the best way because you're almost approaching the insecure audience of like, I want to see what they can get to and maybe I can do that. Yeah. So that was my only thing. Um, oh. In terms of Instagram, I was actually posting recipes, a few workouts here and there. Like I was just sharing and people were almost like so hungry just to know not anything. Yeah. It was really odd. It was like, I just want to know. Um, but... So the first video yeah. that went viral, was that on TikTok or Yeah. And, and it, what was it? I think it was transformation video. Transformation? Yeah. I, I, at the beginning, I rinsed all the weight loss yeah. sounds or whatever. <laughs> like, it was. Like, for me, I wanted to lose weight for so long. I was unhappy with my body for so long. Yeah. And I finally lost a huge amount of weight. And I was so happy with it that my thought process, it was in a positive way at the time I genuinely thought it's what made me happy yeah. so I was pushing it out there I was like girls I figured it out I figured out how to lose weight yeah. we're all gonna be so happy like I'm happy now yeah. and then obviously like I realized it's not and then I had yeah. to kind of go back on my account and be like you know when I said that like it would make you happy like it doesn't but okay. I wouldn't have yeah, yeah I had to go through that and and I did get a lot of comments like at the end like how, you know, you're such a bad influence. I can't believe you ever did that. And I had to go through like a grieving process of my own of, yeah. I'm sorry. And I feel bad for the for the girls that I led to diet and stuff like that. But I think everyone who goes through disordered eating can't blame a certain individual. It's predetermined in their path. They have their insecurities and someone will influence them to only eat apples for a day or only have lettuce, but oh, it's, it's in their pathway of life yeah. to go through that. Yeah, so definitely. we can support and stuff, but yeah. we can't put the blame on one person. Yeah. So yeah, that's kind of So body image and when did that all start with you? When did you start being conscious about maybe how you looked, your body weight? Was that from a young age or was Yeah, I was like six years old. Wow. Yeah, I remember just like looking at my legs and like looking at my friend's legs and I'm like, Mum, why are my legs bigger? And obviously yeah. they weren't. I was tiny. I had like a little bit of muscle, but I just started noticing that and obviously going back now with the therapy like straight away being able to recognize well it's funny because when I was six years old that's when I split apart from my dad that's okay. when I moved literally oh, okay. the other side that's of the world and that's when you start noticing body image is not about what you look like it is completely what has happened in your past what's happened in your childhood when did you start hating yourself was it when you went to school and people started bullying you was it when your mum and dad started fighting between each other you know there's there's things in your life that cause these thoughts about yourself so for me it was you know there was lots of different things that happened in my um like childhood and teenagehood but that was the start of it and then it got like progressively worse probably when I was like 17 and that's when my dad died yeah okay and it's only now have I figured that out but yeah that's pretty much when it started and stuff so with the body image aspect of things it's still something you struggle with now in terms of like now that you live like somewhat of a more of a balanced approach yeah, to fitness, I, is it something which you deal with or? Definitely. What do you think? Get you talking. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm sure Max like, Because obviously Max pretty I much lives with me. Yeah. Definitely like on the whole pr pretty good. Yeah, I definitely a lot definitely better. I think there's definitely times where you're like, oh, I've got 
cellulite or yeah. do you know what I mean? Like I think everyone has a yeah, yeah. So yeah. I wouldn't say it's now a massive thing for you. I think now, but like for us, we're now more focused on like performance and I think doing stuff like running and stuff like that doesn't essentially matter what you look like, which has kind of helped. We're more interested in like the running goal or like being able to like do yoga or like flexible yeah. and stuff like that. So being healthy. Yeah. yeah taking, max, <laughs> max like 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 taking it from like what we look like and taking it onto like, you know, what we can do. Yeah. I think yeah, it's yeah. kind of helped. Yeah. And you've helped me so much with that because I had a really tricky relationship with the gym, even the like the last year, it was kind of, so I'm going to the gym to like change my body, but I'm trying to love it how it is, but like, yeah. I'm not happy with it, but it was like really weird. And I was like, I just wasn't loving it. And then Max comes along and he's like, why don't we start like, you know, run and like oh. train for this <laughs> or whatever. And it's just like, nice. it's really nice to be training for performance and just for like going there to clear my head, mm. going there to literally move some blood around my body yeah, yeah. and not, oh, my shoulders aren't round enough and, and my thighs aren't whatever. Yeah. And my, my, my glutes aren't big enough. Like it's just yeah. and a, it's a not different like, mindset. I think it's not completely like... I don't know what the right word is, but like definitely do it for like aesthetic reasons as well. Like, yeah, yeah that's a motivation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, right? we, so we, wanna, yeah. we don't want to look like we were actually yeah. discussing that topic earlier, just between us two, in regards yeah. to like why do people actually go to the gym? Is it for an aesthetic look? Yeah. Is it just yeah. to feel great? And I know me personally, myself going to the gym did start out with an insecurity. Yeah. Like, I was always quite slim as a child, really petite, really. Then, and I actually probably had the opposite where I wanted to become more like a woman. Yeah. I wanted to have Whereas I wanted hers. to be the opposite. I wanted yeah. to be more yeah. Yeah. And, and that's exactly when I got started in the gym. I remember I was 16 and I had a rugby guy at school, Matt, actually, a good friend of mine. And he was like, right, let's just go to the gym together. We'll do yeah. some squats, get into training. And then I literally just become obsessed with how my body was changing. I was getting bigger. Yeah. And then that phase kind of passed and it did get in more into, this is more like a lifestyle now. Lifestyle, like I want to yeah. go for, like you said, to clear my mind, be in a routine. It's just become a lifestyle now for yeah. me. Yeah. That's definitely what I think Max helped me as well. It's just yeah. like, do it for consistency. Yeah. Do it for yourself in like three years. Definitely. Like if you go to the gym most days, it's just like keeping the ball rolling. Yeah. Instead of like, stopping and then starting for aesthetics and then stopping it's just like yeah just just, just make it a lifestyle yeah, yeah. consistency <laughs> that's one like whenever I get asked by gals especially in the gym like how do you stay motivated how do you like you'll you go five days a week how do you like go and I'm like honestly it's just a lifestyle yeah. thing like yeah. I'm so used to it now where it's to the point that it's in my daily routine I'm just like right I'm gonna go to the gym now yeah it's not like oh god like there's days don't get me wrong where my motivation is like down I'm like oh like yeah. I just can't be bothered today but I'm like right it's 12 it's my daily routine I've got to go, go. Yeah. get some movement in and especially like yeah when you start from the gym young like I started when I was 14 yeah my friends would always come to you know and they started when they were like 17 maybe yeah. 18 they're like how do you do it and I was like and people ask that on my account so I'm like it's just one thing I can't can't give advice yeah. on because I can't even say that I relate to pulling myself to the gym when I don't want to go to the gym I don't go yeah it's easy as that yeah. I don't like and then some people kind of I had some guys like bash me for it once. They were like, how are you ever going to like maintain if you don't like <laughs> go to the gym when you don't want to? Like you've got to push through those days. Yeah, and I was like, no, because then I make it something I don't like. Yeah. Like I keep it for the days I want to go. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I totally agree. I get like that. If there's any time where I'm feeling like, you know, oh, I just can't be bothered to go. I'll have a little think about it. But then yeah. the thing is, is when I come to the decision that I'm not going to go, I carry on with the rest of my day. Yeah. And if there are periods where I need to kind of, you know, Billy's like, no, just go and get it done. I go and I feel great when feel I come cool. out. You always feel so good after it, to be fair. Always. Yeah, yeah. Either, <laughs> yeah. Both decisions that I make, whether I go or not, I end up feeling great. Yeah. So, so it's like, arguably, you've got two phases then in terms of social media. So the weight loss aspect of things, they're more like sporty, athletic kind of documentation now, right? Would that be yeah, fair to say? Yeah, I would say more mental health, actually. Mental I'm health. I'm called Anarcha yeah. Fitness, but it's everything but being physically fit. Yeah. Okay. That, that's what I kind of go by. Um, obviously, I was still in recovery from the eating disorder while coming back onto social media. So I it was anorexia fitness, but like I wasn't really supposed to be working out properly and still trying to get my, you know, I was figuring out my own food. I didn't really want to post everything online. Um, and I've really got into more of the self-help and the self-awareness. And with my recent podcast, it's been like the biggest blessing for me because I, I get to almost do what 
I authentically really want to do. And that is share and help and like (laughs) share experiences and how I've learned from it. Um, So that I would say is where my account is more. But then obviously I just naturally am a little gym girl that just likes to go to the gym and keeps fit. So people come from that side as well. Yeah. Yeah. But I can't say that I actually post workouts. (laughs) Do you know what? That's it. Yeah, I was going to ask you that. It's really interesting. And it's one thing I remember when I was at uh, Made in Italy for dinner the other month. And it was something that when I sat down, I thought about it and really appreciated about yourself is that we we're talking about, you know, releasing a workout guide or some sort of, you know, program for obviously your audience. And you mentioned that, well, no, it's like, why on earth would I do that when I don't even have a proper workout? Honestly, routine? the amount of times that I've been told it's like release a PDF yeah. guide, you'll earn so much. I was like, yeah. I, I can't because I yeah. can't say that you're going to look anything like me or that I know something better than the other person yeah. or just anything like I just don't do that myself. Like yeah. maybe I could sell you some like journaling prompts, but yeah. <laughs> that's about it. <laughs> yeah, it would just be really fake. For you, it, it would, it would. I think that's what you've been now. Like people quite like you just because you are quite genuine. Yeah, and they know like if I'm going to post something like I mean it. And what I have loved is that I've worked with the same two companies for two years now. Yeah. I never changed. Misfits and Gymshark picked me up when I had 30K. It was yeah. actually the first month of me working together, like working on social media. I went with those two and I've stuck with them forever and I literally only post them and if I post an ad it's it's something that I well I don't really do that but it's something that I do believe in so then hopefully it keeps that authenticity of look whatever I tell you is true whether that's a story of my past whether that's a product I post you only get honesty I I don't really know anything but but, you know what I mean like it is quite I think we all are quite naturally (laughs) honest people anyways yeah um, yeah yeah, but the majority of fitness industry aren't as a whole though when you look at it in terms of the high level aspects that's the interesting aspect like yes when you get higher up yeah yeah. I think the the younger generation are I think and they also understand the I suppose long-term benefit of many maintaining honesty with an audience but I think the older generation that we've grown up with maybe not so much yeah. I don't know, yeah, mate, I, I personally feel I like that. I bought plenty of bullshit products. Like her. Oh, oh me, yeah, me, me, yeah. me too. Rob Riches. Yeah, all of those, those guys. Stuff, <laughs> well, they're yeah. like the first generation though, aren't they? And there was like the second yeah. generation of like Matt Ogus. And then it was like Rich, Rich Piana. Yeah, was, like, the yeah, first, yeah. Like... I used to watch his videos and like eat like him. Yeah, yeah. When what I was like 16. Like? Was it weird? He was, I was just like, like a massive guy, but he was like honest about like everything he did, like everything he worked out on. Well, he died because he was on gear. Like copious amounts of steroids. And he literally looks like a human vein. Like that's why he died. But then his diet... His evening meal was a top of Ben and Jerry's. I don't yeah. know if you remember this. He was like, and it's, it's like, and it's a good fucking habit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a good like, one. Yeah, no, <laughs> and I did it. it. Yeah. I did it for like three months. And I was like, mum, I'm going to get like, big. <laughs> 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 like, that was my objective. But then yeah. he was selling his supplements and like every workout product without claiming that he was like on gear. And then he obviously eventually did. But yeah. 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 Apologies for interrupting this podcast. We hope you're enjoying this episode so far. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to listen to or watch this podcast. We hope you're enjoying the conversation and are, of course, extracting tremendous amounts of value from it. If you haven't already done so, we'd really appreciate it if you could subscribe to this channel, drop this podcast a like, and share it with anyone that you may know who's wanting to build a career in the fitness industry. And let us know who you'd like to see on as a guest of ours in the comments section down below. Let's get back to the podcast. I just remember like being on Instagram and YouTube at the time when I first started going to the gym and like these crazy workouts. Obviously I was working on my legs and butt to start yeah. off with. Yeah. And at these crazy like jumping around workouts and kickbacks, a hundred kickbacks. And I was doing all that to start off with. And I was like, great, this is great. I'm going to get a body like this model on yeah. Instagram. Yeah. This is what I'm going to look like in a few months. And of course it, it definitely made a little change, but it wasn't until I actually started researching more about fitness and yeah, diving into like, things that, yeah. and the biggest shock for me was actually seeing an influencer in the gym, I won't name, um, but seeing a big influencer in the gym and watching them actually work out. And I was in shock. I was like, hold on. (laughs) What did you say? What's going on? Just like half-hearted workouts. This was when I was starting to properly train. So I was squatting, I was squatting about 80 kg. I was deadlifting, hip thrusting. This was when I was around 20 years old. And I saw this influence in the gym and they were just doing, you know, this random half-hearted workout, which is fair enough, like yeah. nothing against that, but what they were promoting on Instagram in terms of oh, getting a body like this and working out, eating like this, doing so hard. And I was just like, God, is this genetically that you're just like this yeah. naturally? And then you're yeah. trying to sell through Instagram and products like, this is how you can get a body like me. And yeah. girls like myself actually 
being naturally thin and you know having to actually train hard to put on muscle and eat well seeing that it was just yeah it was it was a big shock and it's something that we we dove into earlier yeah in yeah, regards yeah. to fitness influencers in the space and whether they are just genetically because some people are you know just i just agree with that because i publicly say yeah although it looks like you know i squat loads like i can if i try yeah but i just don't i've got like thick legs you know i've got strong legs yeah but I do a home workout yeah. and I run, but I've still got these muscly legs. So it's like, I'm almost like, I do what that influencer does. Like I will just do some like, I do body weight squats at the gym. I just yeah. stand there in front of the mirror. I'm just like, this is fun. This is yeah. nice. Yeah. Was like, but, your abs, but I say that. Well, your abs as well, you'd say it was like genetically. Yeah, my, my stomach as well. It's just naturally a bit leaner. And I, I don't, you know, I, I say to people, they're like, oh, what's your ab workout? I'm like, there's, there's nothing there. Do you know what I mean? It's just but like being what, honest with great. that. I always see on TikTok like, do this like you know two minute ab workout and you're gonna like have abs like yeah. <laughs> yeah it's crazy but it's great the transparency that you bring to your audience in understanding that because I think it is a massive issue within the fitness industry definitely yeah definitely for sure I think people go through phases as well because yeah. I remember when I was 14 I was looking up four minute ab work like get yeah. no it was yeah. get abs in four minutes no, and I was yeah, literally I there in my room and I was like yeah, yeah. 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 I was like I can't uh, wait for the abs yeah. the four minute look in the mirror I'm like yeah. where are they I'm like where are they <laughs> I've done that too I've done and so then you go into this like super research phase where you like learn I think everyone has that when they're in the fitness they learn everything and then you get a bit obsessive and you're like right I'll slow down a bit all right, what about business then? Let's dive into that aspect. Yeah. So you refer to the fact that you're working with two companies, so yes. but you're not selling any products. So okay. what what is the, the long-term goal of the brand that you're building in terms of social media presence yeah. and how are you looking to monetize what you've built? Or are you looking to monetize what you've built? What's your perspective on yeah, that? Yeah, so obviously it all came to me quite quickly. Mm. And at the beginning, I didn't even know like what tax was. Like I came straight out of A-levels. You don't yeah. get taught it. Yeah. Um, and I started working with the companies and I started seeing, well, my first like paycheck was more than what they expected, like for me to sell. Like the, basically the sales were quite big yeah. at the beginning. And it was because I had a very engaged audience. So I started earning quite a bit, but I was still living at home and I was still like, honestly, living off probably like less than 50 pounds a week. Like on, and then <laughs> I, um, yeah, so I just kind of got into routine of, I basically have two long-term contracts with these brands mm -hmm that set up for quite a long time and then now it's come to the point okay now it's two years later now I'm looking to do that next step because I can't say I was in the position before even yeah. though I might have had the engaged audience and and the potential sales but if I don't if I'm a 19 year old that doesn't have a business brain on and not even a business brain I was completely thinking about food and exercise and quite disordered like disordered eating I had no room for any intellectual business thoughts whereas now that I'm you know pretty much recovered and and getting back into that, I'm able to now brainstorm with Max, like, where do we want to take the brand? And we were literally thinking about it yesterday. Yeah, pretty much. Um, well, yeah, because oh, I'm sure these guys, I know you guys work together. Yeah. yeah. So you guys are yeah, in a couple yeah. and you work together, like Recently. me and Brittany also. So yeah, what, how does that work? Together. What's the collaboration like? And what are you actually wanting to achieve? Like Anna was referring to then, what, yeah. what's the goal? I mean, it's it's really new for us and we are still trying to work out how best to, yeah, we need to some work tips. it out. <laughs> yeah, we do, basically. No, like, we are, yeah. yeah, no, I was saying we, we work well together like, on a personal no arguments or anything like that but i think to both of us get the most out of each other we definitely need like a change in terms of how we're working but also we are going to move we are like moving to bali and stuff yeah. like this so. new location yeah. together yeah. yeah fresh environment new start yeah. And it, yeah. no distractions yeah mm -hmm. do well, go say through, that. Yeah, do go through like you know building something in terms of i don't know if i could say it like publicly but there was like yeah. we're going through sort of a, a business i was basically going to build a clothing business yeah, you um, mentioned before, yeah, and I just didn't pull through with it because what they wanted to offer me it just wasn't the standard product that I want and I feel a massive pressure because I'm not a small let's say platform that's just releasing a product to a couple of people mm. and whatever I promote I've got to be completely honest and the level of clothing that they said oh this is what we can physically make like best for you it just wasn't good enough for me like my standards of what I want my clothes to be like and what I'd want to sell to someone yeah okay. so I just didn't go through with it and it kind of worked at the time not to do it because we ended up having other things like the podcast came out and that was like one of the best things that happened and we've now brought on a team so actually now we've got way more time like yeah. I don't have I used to spend my time editing and that I think was one of the biggest lessons is like 
Pay someone else. You just yeah. hate yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. You just hate it as well. You just yeah. Also, like, until when were you editing your own content? Was that until like last month? Or? Yeah. Really? So like oh, literally gosh. three weeks ago. Wow. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. I think I did it because I wanted to be busy. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. I have this thing of I, f- I feel guilty if I'm not working. So it was like right if I wake up at seven and I edit till four. With like an hour gap in between, I'm working all day. Sure. So it was like trying to kid yourself, like, you know, like the four hour work week or something like that. It's like, right I, know, I, was like, yeah, so yeah. I was like, yeah, Look at like, the post-its you're and trying that. to like yeah, make yeah. yourself have work. Yeah. yeah. Whereas now it's kind of, I've gone through that like super hard, always working phase. And then recently we've had a bit more laid off. We went to a festival, kind of finding our feet again. And then hopefully in Bali, we have this kind of, when we work, we're going to work hard and we're going to put our time into things, but not have to do the whole day so we miss it or, you know, yeah. something like that. But I think in terms of the, like, products and stuff like that, that also is, we're sort of moving away from that just because we're not sure where we're going to be, mm. how we're going to get, like, if it is clothing, something like that, how we're going to get clothes to Bali, Logistics Australia, aspect. something yeah. like that. So, I think, so maybe yeah. it's just a different I think time. So now yeah. looking at, you know, and we're not even sure on exactly, but some sort of like service business and but we're, we're not even sure really. We're just... Well, you're thinking about we're it. We're thinking yeah, about we're it, thinking basically. About it. We're, thinking it's, it's, we're thinking about it is, is, is the main thing. <laughs> but yeah, we're, we're not 100% sure really, but we've both sort of got quite like manifestation weird, like believe in like the sort oh, of awesome. foodies guys. Yeah. So yeah. Like, but, something will come basically is what we Also, we're my aspirations and goals are... When I think about what do I want to achieve, I go, I want to be number one podcast. I want to be, I want to, not even let's say number one, I want to reach so many people. I want to share with so many people. I want my YouTube to be like a viral account or like, you know, like reach so many people. Like that's where my passion is. Mm. It isn't necessarily, like I am making pretty good money at the moment. So the ask, it's not like I'm not comfortable and I can't quite afford things and now I need to, there's still the aspiration to earn more. Mm. But at the moment, it's I want to reach people and, and I want to grow everything. And then in a year, if I want to then put out a product and I can sell that, I, I, I know I can. Yeah, yeah. But at the moment, it's not like I want to make a product and it's like, here, push it. I, I want to build I want to build myself more. Okay. Yeah. So you prioritize, from your perspective, in terms of enjoyment, content over business? Or would you say that's fair? I, or I can't that say a- I know everything. And I might look back at this and be like, oh, <laughs> you know, because you guys are, you know, older, wiser, and whatever. But at the moment, not much older. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not like, much older, but I think even just wiser. Like, we're not ancient. <laughs> no, I know. Yeah. But I think even a couple of years makes oh, I'm it's so much more developed does. than I was two years ago. hundred oh, percent. So I that's agree. what I mean in that way. Um, but yeah, like I, I, I earn quite a lot of money from the influencing part. If I go up by another hundred k on my Instagram, or even fifty k, twenty k, I get paid quite a bit more. Yeah. So. Although it doesn't seem like, oh, you're not monetizing, the more I grow, essentially, the more I can charge the external companies mm. to do the same thing that I'm doing. Does it not frustrate you at times that they're making the majority of the money from your yeah, following? Or potentially. Potentially? Potentially. But then at the same time, I'm not running a business, although I want to. That is something I want to do. Yeah. But at the moment, it's like, yeah, it's, I don't know how to explain that. I think it's about like control, I think, and you know, you don't mind, you know, you have set things that you have to do for X company. And I think mm, yeah. ultimately you want to get, you know, away from yeah, that. Yeah, I want to be less brand dependent. Yeah. That's definitely you, you do want to be less brand dependent. I do brand want to be less brand yeah. dependent. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think you're in a rush to do it. It's, you know, sort of mm. where you're at at the moment, really. You're quite enjoying, you know, working with like, And you I, do like, they, they treat you well and you treat them well. And, you know, it all works quite amicably. So yeah. I think at the moment you're like, you're fine to... You know, I find it super interesting with content creators, if that's okay, is like to refer to as a content creator. Maybe, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> that some of them have aspirations to build a business, but they're not competent business people. They're better content creators. And by no means am I implying that that's the case for oh, anyone else. But yeah. it's just interesting to see how they kind of manage that dynamic. And other people are just innately better business people that have so happened to build an authority in terms of their audience. Like Grace Beverly, for example. Yeah. Like she built a, a huge audience, but she's a very competent business person. Whereas that might not be said for other people. And then seeing that dynamic is very interesting. See how that kind of maps out. Yeah. And, and also how they partner with other people that are better skilled. So for example, yeah. like she partners other companies who actually build her business on her behalf to an extent or build her team. And she's the face to an extent. Less so now with her companies, but with like the eBooks and stuff is definitely the case. She's honestly like one of my idols and like we're quite close friends anyways. Um, but I say everything I say about business with like, half a hand being like, uh, I don't actually know very much. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I'm quite new. Yeah. And I'm like, um, 
I'm up for learning about things and and that's part of what I love to do. Like I want to keep reading more, more podcasts, learning from wiser people and like taking on their advice. I'm never going to be that person that's like, no, I'm doing the right thing here. Like obviously okay. at the moment, this is where I am. But yeah, I want to be less brand pen. I want to have my own brand. Mm. Uh, yeah, that's basically what the plan is. <laughs> and you guys partnered from the perspective of Max being more businessy or just from the perspective of wanting, how, how, what was the objective there? Was it kind of? Yeah, I think, I think in terms of like, it basically just started off with like helping her with like emails and like negotiations and stuff like that. And then I was like, oh, I'll never work with a partner. It's like, there's yeah, no he was way. like, I'll never work. Like, like, yeah, I'll never you guys are still yeah, negotiating yeah. it when we, when yeah, we so I was like, oh, there's, there's uh, no way. And then it's sort of just like the, the way that we worked together, I was like, oh, there's, you know, there, there could be yeah, a bit more to it. And then just sort of the way it worked out with like other jobs and stuff, I was like, right, we're doing it. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that, in terms of like how, how it does work, like, there's no, we haven't really set anything like at the moment in terms of, in terms of being paid at stuff. Like I will, how we're like working out is like at the moment, I'll be getting a, like a percentage of anything that comes in. Yeah. So, okay. and I think that's how we want it because. We, we know felt, other people have done that. So it's like a safe barrier for both of us. So yeah. like, you've seen right, right, yeah. yeah. We also felt like, you know, there, then there would be no like animosity if it was like a set thing and you weren't feeling I was doing enough or. I felt I was doing too much. We've had moments like that. Oh, yeah. Because I'm like quite that. naggy. And, and I'll I'll be like, like, what are you doing? Yeah. Why aren't you working? <laughs> well, it's your baby, isn't it? If I'm you, like, it's 7am. Yeah. Yeah. Why aren't you yeah, working? Yeah. So then I was like... You've been working five hours. Yeah. I'm like, what? <laughs> so it's no, like, it is. So I'm on, like... On that front, it's like, you know, if you're someone commissioned, it's like, you know, if I don't work, I don't get paid, which I'm, you know, happy to do with because I know, the, you know, the money is there to earn. Yeah. And, you know, in the same front, you can't be angry if I don't you know, finally, he's not, not paying me. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. like, and I think yeah. that just keeps it good for us anyway, how, yeah. how we like to work it. But in terms of like bigger things, like I just find, I think for me, I'm like thinking about bigger things. Yeah. We know that like we're going to do it together kind of thing. Yeah. So it's like, if he's going to help me with some groundwork when I'm trying to find my feet, yeah. if we're going to become this, this big thing, more, like, he knows he's going to be involved in that. More of the businessy part, I would say, but you're just more of the like, the content stuff and yeah together also we like the well. behind the scenes stuff as well yeah and yeah you like learning about it but yeah it's very new and very fresh and yeah. we're not sure but we we know we want to have like more and we want to have like something to build on whether that be you know talent management something like that or okay so actually person. different yeah different yeah time. yeah okay. i think and i think i want know. him to create something for himself so he has something to like you know it's like his thing as well yeah, yeah. so even if we work together i could be a client of his talent agent yeah. So it's like yeah. his thing, yeah. my thing. Yeah. Yeah. So if you don't mind me asking, why were you kind of against working together? Well, I don't want to say against, but yeah. not really keen what was the on working yeah, together. I, I wasn't. <laughs> yeah, no, I know I, I, you I, I, yeah, like, yeah, I love yeah. it. I was like, it was obvious you weren't. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Max, do you want to like, do my emails? I was like, Max, do you potentially think, want to move to Bali? Yeah, <laughs> I think like, there's a couple of things. Like before, I, I think you were saying the same thing as well. Like you hadn't, you know, your, your previous relationship, you hadn't, hadn't met anyone that you'd want to yeah. that with. So, yeah. and I, I don't think that's a bad thing as well. Like, like if some couples don't want to work together, or don't you know, get on working together, that's, that's fine. That's I think that's fine. And, and that's what I'd come from. So I was like, and I'd heard, you know, other people, you know, don't work with your partner. So I was like, oh, okay, you know, I'm not yeah, going to work with that, a partner. That's all I have. It's that other stuff. It's yeah, the external. But then, what it's hard to deal with. All but that also as it. well. The chatter like, from external sources. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but also... That. Just like one yeah. of the other things as well was like, you know, if I quit my job and we break up, I'm like yeah. out, I'm like <laughs> out in the wind. <laughs> like I'm like fresh. I'm like in the middle of Bali. Yeah, like, in the middle of Bali. You know what I mean? In the middle of Bali. In a rice field. No just job, on a no road girlfriend, road. no money. So oh, I was yeah. like, yeah. but I was like, but then I was just like, I was like working like a sales job anyway, like here. And I was like, if that does happen, I'll, yeah. I'll just come back here and do back. exactly the same thing and be, yeah. You know, you know what, pretty I, much where I am anyway. I actually felt quite similar when we decided to work together. I mean, we were completely different. We we met and I think automatically we were kind of like, right, we're both so obsessed with business, mm. you know, building something. I mean, on our first date, we actually went to Made in Italy where we took you guys. Oh, yeah, <laughs> that's our little spot. And I remember we just didn't stop speaking about business, what I was doing, what he was doing yeah. the whole night. And it, and it was great. And we got into a relationship during lockdown, pretty much peak of lockdown, started living together. It all kind of happened so quickly. And people were like to me, oh my 
God, like it's too much. Yeah. 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 Living with him, spending all the time with him. And I was like, no, I'm, I'm loving it. I'm enjoying it. We're great together. And it, it came up where Billy just sat down with me one day and he was like, you know, building this, like, I want you to be a part of it. We realized we had different skills that completely like complemented each other. And we kind of just went for it, but it was, it was really scary for me because I was in a secure job. I was working as head of finance in an econ business and I was starting to build my career. I was going up the ladder very quickly. I was earning good money. I was, you know, a boss, a female boss, whatever yeah. you want to call it. And <laughs> I kind of yeah, felt, that boss lady yeah. up there. <laughs> and for me, obviously you mentioned that you were in a sales job and you were kind of just like, you know what, if, if this doesn't work out, then I can kind of just go back into that. And I had that kind of feeling of, do you know what, I'm, I'm so scared that if I leave and this doesn't work out, what am I going to do? Yeah. I was, so I had to kind of deal with that. But it happened, we, we started working together kind of on the side. So I was still working for the company that I was head of finance for. And we was doing a bit, I was doing a bit of Billy kind of after work or I was working from home during the time, so during the day. And we had a really great month. And Billy was kind of like, what are you waiting for? Yeah. Like, that was like literally like us. He was like for? doing some side things, and I was like, yeah. "You're literally depressed after yeah. your work day." Like he was like so. <laughs> yeah. He was like he would yeah. come back from like he'd work from home, and he'd just be like so. Oh, oh my okay? god, that was like me, right? Well, no, you were just so overly stressed about I things, was, which is just like there's no ben I, net benefits to you. Yeah, yeah. It was really bad because when I started out my job, I, I started out as an admin assistant, and within two years, like I was head of finance. I was nineteen, just turning That's twenty, crazy. and I got off the job and. I didn't have any skills in regard to being able to delegate work, working as a team. So I kind of just took on absolutely everything. And if my yeah. team, my old team's watching this, they'll so agree that I never gave them anything. Yeah. I wanted to do all the work. Like, I, wanted to be, yeah. I wanted to be perfect. I was like, it has to be this level, my level, none less. And I was crazy. So I would come home and I was just overwhelmed, like stressed out, overwhelmed yeah. all the time. And, and yeah, exactly. It was like, what are you waiting for? Like money is on an issue. Just leave. Let's start working together. Um, definitely can relate to what you guys are talking about in regards to learning how to work together, how to separate that from your personal relationship, because a business relationship can be completely different. Yeah. yeah. And what you expect of each other. I well, how, how do you yeah. guys find that? How do you guys find a dynamic between the two? Well, I think when people almost like question it and be like, oh, are you sure you want to work together? I was like, but when we started, it brings more passion and conversation yeah and does, why are we yeah. against that like yeah. why do you have to completely like you know when yeah. you do like kind of have that bond together and you're talking about work you shouldn't have to shut it off if you're so passionate about it yeah, yeah it's the if whole you guys are like of, in flow go with it yeah, yeah it's the premise of not talking about work when you're at a date yeah. yeah. Like, well, if you're I obsessed think... with it and you're going to talk yeah. about it, aren't you? Like, yeah. You should encourage like, that. It's so it stupid. The yeah. most fun thing to like think of some big fuck off goals and be like, right, we're gonna yeah. we're gonna build a yeah. temple. Like, yeah, like carry on. Yeah, rather than yeah. talking yeah. about what you're doing on Saturday. Yeah, like, you know what I mean. Like, yeah. 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 Well, otherwise, our conversation is like, like I think you might as well. We, yeah, <laughs> the, the test will be when we like actually build like something like an actual like business business. And you've got and to take on responsibility. Yeah, and then or and then we're like you know at the dinner table talking about like, did you reply to that email or yeah? I don't know. I think there's like. Well, but I, I I like like the chats that we have like at the dinner table like about business and yeah. stuff like that. I think theirs has to be like sometimes where you're like, you know, you can you can like switch off. Yeah. You can just be I, a couple I, I again. I totally agree. Yeah, you and don't have to like. I speak big I don't. on. <laughs> <laughs> but we have, when you have yeah. different personalities and how you are, I mean, I feel strongly about having a balance of work and personal life relationship. Um, Billy is completely <laughs> obsessed with what we're doing at work and yeah. I am too but there is times where I just want to go for a walk and I, I think yeah it. I go to Max and I go can I have my boyfriend right now yeah like, <laughs> and and like, like can I have my boyfriend yeah. and can we just like be a bit you know it's like it's exactly yeah. like I say that all the time Tim I need boyfriend Billy now yeah. like not work Billy boyfriend but I'm always Billy, like please. as soon as he says I'm like what do you mean what do you mean, <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> how, how am I not have? how am I not being boyfriend Billy yeah. Yeah. like how, how am I not doing like, that it's so I've intense. asked you how your day was <laughs> <laughs> it's so intense of like right we just need to like be romantic have a cuddle like not talk about work but yeah. I definitely think there has to be some balance and maybe yeah. you guys haven't got the I think we're yet, like but. silly I think that's our escape like our yeah. Yeah. which is great I don't yeah. know <laughs> yeah but there can be that like sort of romantic element to 
the business, I guess. It, so it looks like you're dreaming right, together yeah. about it. I think and like, you have it, the capacity to do what you want whenever you want. Yeah, to yeah. That means you can actually have a yeah. relationship whilst yeah. working. Like, yeah. It's so much better. The, the reason why I feel like it is so important to understand the balance and have some sort of balance out, because undoubtedly in business, there are going to be times when it's stressful, yeah. when it's getting hard, when stuff needs to get done, you're not having a great month. Yeah. And you can, because your partners, your business partners, you can start to either take it out on each other, not start you know, yeah. communication fouls. Exactly. And I feel like that's where what we've learned previously, I mean, you guys definitely said at the start, you've got the passion for it. You're all excited. We are exactly the same. And at the start, we were so passionate about everything and crazy, da, da, da. And we've been working together now, what, like eight? Nearly. Nearly a year. Nearly full. Nearly. No, no, no. no. No, like maybe. nearly full seven months. Full seven like months. Like full time. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And I feel like living together, so we live together, we spend probably, we're never apart. I feel like the only time live, we're work, apart. Eat, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like definitely having all that together and business becoming a little bit more serious. Probably three months in, it started to kick into me where I was like, right, we need to ensure we have a balance with our personal What did you do? Like, what do you put in place to make sure like you don't go... Yeah, exactly. Crazy. So we have some non-negotiables like date night. So date night every single Thursday and an effort is made, whether that's going out to dinner, cooking a homemade meal, you know, going to the cinema, bowling. It doesn't have to be anything crazy, but that's yeah. our night together. And we, so last night we actually went out and um, we completely shut off and just, you know, we can talk about business if we want, but if we yeah. don't want to, we don't need to. Yeah. And just have a laugh and kind of relax and, you know, just be us, yeah. be in our relationship. So that... Um, we no phones on, on a walk. Yeah, no phones on a walk is really important to us. <laughs> I was looking at him. Yeah, like... no phones. I mean, I... I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I am such a big... Like, I hate... For me, my whole job's on my phone. Yeah. So I hate... Like, I do hate it. So whenever I see Max on it, I'm like... I have this whole thing. It's like, why are you on it if you don't yeah. have to be on it? I'm like, get off your phone. <laughs> I agree. I think it's the best thing we actually done because we were going for walks in the park where we're taking our phones and we constantly get distracted. Like something would pop up or yeah. you'd be on the news and we'd just kind of, we'd be together, but no, we slack. weren't together. You know, slack, slack, slack in the school. Notifications. And yeah, I just feel constantly. like, because I'm like you, I like not being on my phone sometimes, yeah. especially when I'm out and like in the nature and out for a walk. And I had to say to Billy, I was like, right, we're not going to take our phones and walk anymore. Like, no, we're going to leave them need to, here. together. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. It, and it's been great. So that's another thing that we do. Um, and I think the biggest thing for us is just communication, like sitting down, actually mm. talking about mm. how each other are feeling, whether that's in business, work, what's going on during the day, if I'm struggling with anything, if he's struggling with anything what we kind of expect from each other in business, what yeah. our roles yeah. are. I'm glad that is one of your big points. Yeah. I think that's like... The thing that we've kind of got like figured out more to start with anyways yeah and then we can always like you know what build on build maybe. on that yeah it's it's what we learned definitely in terms of our responsibilities in business and a relationship and i feel like people have this idea when you grow up and you watch these films and you see these perfect relationships on tvs and these romance and you think that, especially as a as a woman, I know, like, I want my prince charming. Like, my boyfriend should be doing this for me and doing yeah. that. And yeah. I shouldn't ever have to say anything to him because yeah, he should, should just, read just them know. Yeah. He should know what I want. He should do this. And that's definitely... Listen, it matters. <laughs> yeah, it's, <great. laughs> it's definitely <laughs> something I've learned. Like, Billy's had to say to me, like, Brittany, we need to communicate. Like, if you want something or if you're not feeling a certain way, just tell me. Because I can be quite close in a sense where... If he doesn't do something or if he makes me feel a certain way, I kind of just close off to it. And yeah. it's something we've learned, I think, working together now that we have to communicate and it's so important. Yeah, it's constantly just like checking in with each other. And yeah. like, I think, you know, should I say about like, we, you're always telling each other like different stories. So yeah. let's say you're at, you're working from home and you you don't feel like you're getting enough attention and, and you're like, oh, he's, he's working so past like work yeah. time and I've cooked dinner and it's getting cold. Yeah. That's your story in your head. And then you're panicking because you've got a client and an email. Yeah, and that's your so story. Yeah. But without telling each other that, you're saying, oh, he's nah. you're yeah. like, why is she nagging at me? I've got yeah, this yeah. going on. Yeah. So you've got this like conflict. Whereas you have to just go to each other and be like, you literally have to say, I'm telling a story that like, you don't really care that yeah. I just cook you dinner and I yeah. feel a bit sad. And you go, my story is that like, I'm stressing out because I'm about to lose something. Or And then you're like, you almost feel like, Bless you for that. And bless you yeah, for that. And, yeah. it's, it's, and then it's just like you yeah. heard your story and you're okay. And you understand. So like that's like really helped us because like I tell myself some stories that like, oh, 
all this and then it's wild <laughs> yeah and then he's just like, <laughs> like something else up. is going on <laughs> woke yeah. up from a dream so like, I'll forgive you like, that's the classic I haven't done anything <laughs> no, 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 I'm like no classic. Anything. you did something in my dream <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like and it, was a good, it wasn't a good one <laughs> yeah. morning fuck you yeah <laughs> <laughs> Um, if you don't mind me asking, Anna, actually, I want to get into this point of your childhood, obviously growing up with separated parents like myself. Yeah. I'm from a separated family, grew up with a single mom. Um, do you feel like that's had an impact on your romantic and personal relationships at all? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think, what were we talking about this morning about? Was it trusting? I think just we like, trust, yeah. yeah trusting men like yeah. my experience whether that's family members whether that's my dad whether that's ex-boyfriends it's are they going to walk away are they whatever and yeah. it's just like never being able to like fully believe that they really want you or love you yeah. and it's that part of you yeah. um but I think now we've like come to a place like yeah I'm, I'm quite reassured you know yeah. <laughs> and it's just like um yeah I think just also the more you open up about yourself to your partner. So whether or not I've had divorced parents or whether or not how I felt in certain situations with my dad or whatever, the more I tell Max, the more he knows why yeah. I'm crying about certain things. Yeah. And the more he can just know, instead of being like, is she just like a crazy emotional girl? No, yeah. like she's just hurt in places. So that's something that I've learned is like, the more you open up to each other. And that's the same for guys as well. The guys yeah. that have been taught that like to not, to not feel anything. Oh, there's nothing up, nothing wrong. And for the girls to make space for the guys to talk about things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we do. I like to talk to Billy a lot about his feelings. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, what's up? <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, I think Fraud. it's, I think it's yeah. really... Yeah, oh, my shoulder hurts. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's really important. And I think I've seen that firsthand, really, because growing up again from separated parents, I've got three brothers. So... I was quite lucky, obviously, we stayed with our, our mom and I have an amazing relationship with my mom and I've always had her there to look up to as a role model and had that connection. But on the other side of my brothers, they've obviously grown up without dad and, you know, not knowing, you know, what a role model is, yeah. what to kind of follow, how to open up, how to communicate. And I can definitely see the impact that that's had on them in romantic relationships, emotionally, um, so that's why I do make it a big effort to kind of open up to Billy, speak to him. Yeah. How are you feeling? Especially because the trauma yeah. that he's, of course, gone through is important. If you're listening to or watching our podcast, my guess is that you're obsessed with all things gym and fitness, just like us. And would love nothing more than to make money and build a career in the fitness industry, doing something you love. You're a full-time personal trainer, eager to start, grow and scale your online fitness coaching business. Perhaps you're working a nine to five job and are longing to turn your passion for health and fitness into a massively profitable business. For those of you that didn't know, Brittany and I run a company together called Info Productions and we help fitness coaches build a massively profitable online fitness coaching businesses, just like the one I scaled to $30,000 a month at the age of 20. As you can see on screen, our client Oliver has just informed us that he is celebrating his biggest month in business yet by generating £22,500 in one month. He had earned in a month what he had previously earned in a year in his old corporate job. Josh, who informed me during his onboarding call that he's always been passionate about health and fitness, which is what led to him pursuing a career as an online fitness coach, has just informed us that he's generated $8,700 for his online fitness coaching business this month. Our client Raj has just signed a new client for $4,800. Charles has just informed us he's hit a new revenue PR this month and collected $14,600 for his online fitness coaching business. Through our coaching program, we teach our clients how to build an online coaching offer that serves a prospect that's in pain, that has access to capital, that is easy to identify on social media, and is part of a growing market. This enables our clients to charge a premium for their service, just as Billy did as an online fitness coach. Upload problem and pain solving content that adds value to the lives of their prospects and ensures that our coaches are perceived as authorities on the social media platforms that ideal clients use. Learn how to leverage our organic traffic acquisition strategies and systems. I scaled my business to $30,000 a month organically without the use of any paid traffic. This is the exact system we teach our clients to leverage to grow their businesses organically. Refine their messenger engagement strategies to book in qualified sales calls. 
Become a master at selling their premium priced online coaching services over a sales call with their prospect. Finally, radically enhance their clients' results with our coaching and service delivery framework. We are so confident in our ability to help our clients build a massively profitable online fitness coaching business that we operate with a refund guarantee. Should you get to the end of the Info Productions coaching program and you've not reached the financial goal we established during your onboarding call, we will transfer you the entire program fee back. If you are keen to learn more about our service and book yourself in for a call with me and Billy, then take a look at the link in our bio. Let's get back to the podcast. Yeah, no, definitely. But also after lockdown. Yeah. Because you've been like in your own head for two years. Basically. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think everyone had like a decline in. I think with like me as well, though, like I've, I've like been very lucky to have, I don't have any, like my parents are still together. Mm. Like, you know, everything's like fine. They're, you know, you know, well, I'm not going to say well off, but you know, they're, they're fine. Yeah. Look after you. Never had like any worries about anything like that. And so it's like, when she's like, well, what, what's wrong with, like, what, no, what, not yeah. what's like, wrong so, with you, like, but, you. Like, yeah, and I was like, well, you? I, you know, I feel like pretty normal, I haven't really had anything that's, like, happened, but then we sort of, like, dug deeper, yeah. and it's just, like, like little things, so I remember I saw, like, a photo of me, like, at, like, school, and I was like, oh, that feels a bit weird, I feel like, yeah. I remember I was, like, quite shy, and it's just, like, sometimes it doesn't have to be, like, these, these big things that can have, like, an impact, it can be, like, little things that you kind of just think you've got over, but... Maybe yeah. haven't really. It's quite a but major thing. About, so yeah. you, you feel like it's important to dig into your past. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think a lot of people, especially, let's say you do struggle with depression, mental health or eating disorders or whatever, people go, but I had good parents, my parents are yeah. together, I have a lot of money and like, you know, whatever. And it's like, but you know you can feel unloved at any point. You could be three years old, you could be crying, your mum walks out the room because she's stressed about your sister or something. But in that moment as a child, you feel unloved and... And there's like a little button that goes off in your head that like, oh, rejection or something else. And there's like tiny little events, whether that's your parents having a squiggle or, yeah. you know, all these little things or feeling like a loser at school. You build these ideas of yourself and pre seven years old, you build up a lot of your core beliefs as a human. Yeah. Whether that's I'm unlovable, I'm not good enough, um, my dad will never love me, you know, all these things. Yeah. So um, there's like, it's called little T and big T. Big T can be death, abuse you know, all that stuff. And then you've got little T is the tiny, tiny little things, but still matter. So it's like with Max, like, okay. I was like, I don't care whether you've had good parents and whatever. It's like, I still, I still know there's like little beliefs within yeah. him that like yeah. maybe doesn't think he's good enough. Yeah. And it's just, all it is about noticing, notice where it came from. You don't have to then go back to your past and be like, whatever. It's just like, ah, oh, so I didn't actually feel too good when I was like six years old in school and I felt a bit left out and I felt whatever. So it's just good to notice because you kind of, you show up for your younger self, which is like one of the biggest things. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. I've got a good question. I'm going to dive into. <laughs> Anna, what have you failed at at this age from your perspective? Because I'm sure a lot of young people look up to you and think, oh, you've got the kind of perfect life, you know, like okay. work for yourself, etc." Yeah. What have you failed at? Or what do you, in your opinion, what are you bad at? Um, letting go of control. That was one thing. Okay. I am like a big control freak in terms of, I didn't, I haven't had a manager for the last two years and well, since I started and I know for the fact the first year of my earnings probably could have been like five times the amount yeah. if I had a manager and told me what I should earn and stuff. So it was things like letting people have control, always having to edit my videos, like these type yeah, of things. Yeah. Um, have you got anything to add? <laughs> I feel like he knows was, me at my core. Yeah, there's, there's like, there is definitely something that's on the top of my head, but I can't. I think that what about failures so something that you put like a bunch of effort into oh, and care into okay, and you're yeah. like oh shit um, it hasn't panned out like what would that be you know what the hard thing is that I've actually thought about this and things have worked out yeah and everything has come to me quite I can't say easily because I've put in the work but whatever I've put in the work for happens and I think that's where actually the imposter syndrome comes at its most because it's like well not even imposter syndrome but it's I really beat myself up. Like I don't actually let myself fail, I'd say. Yeah. Because it's like, I'll put out a, a certain video on YouTube, but if it doesn't do well, I won't go back there again. Or I'm like scared of trying yeah. because I'm like, no, everything I do works. If I start on Instagram, yeah. it'll work. If I start a podcast, it would be good. Like, I don't know whether that's power of the mind or whether I just put things into it, but I can't say that I have started a business or an account or something and it hasn't gone well. Doesn't mean that I don't beat myself up if I'm not growing by 100% every month, but... Mm. That's like me being honest. Okay. 
but like project wise no yeah. yeah so so going back quickly to you mentioned about having a management team in place and obviously yeah. earning a lot more when it comes to first getting those sponsorships yeah you're obviously quite young so yeah. how is dealing with that like looking back now do you feel like maybe you were taken advantage of exactly how did yeah. you deal with that whole process because I know obviously going for it is a similar thing but obviously getting free stuff from companies maybe not being paid for it doing certain yeah. things how did you deal with kind of knowing what should I be earning and what yeah at the beginning I had no idea I wasn't charging for anything I I don't know what I'm allowed to like say in terms of yeah, like pay no with other companies yeah. but let's just say for like first six months I wasn't earning anything okay. and then it was like so it was like and I the, the thing is was that one company was paying me I was getting commission off my sales because yeah. my sales were good I was earning a lot so I was earning a lot of commission so I thought I was doing well off so I never questioned why the companies weren't paying me like a base salary yeah. or why I went or you know I didn't really didn't charge know, yeah. any other companies so I was like I'm earning so, enough yeah. So did I'm 19, you, I'm earning this. Did you, like, know that was even a thing to be earning? I, I didn't know. No, I didn't know I was I know. going. I didn't know I was supposed to be. I didn't know my engagement. I didn't realise how engaging my account was. Yeah. Even it still is. But I didn't, I didn't realise then. And it, I really do believe it's the limiting belief you put on yourself. Okay. You, like, so. I think you said something about it. Like, you could charge £100 for, like, yeah, being yeah. a PT. Mm. But if you let yourself charge that much yeah. it can happen as well yeah and that was me I, I thought I could just be paid about this much because you know when I started getting my first like contract I was like oh my god I'm being paid like yeah. x amount but I thought that was true because I didn't have a very high opinion on myself anyways I thought okay. I wasn't doing great so I was like yeah. yeah that's about enough then when I realized what I should have been earning I kind of went to other companies and I was like um <laughs> I think I'm moving companies. What would yeah. you pay me? And then a couple of companies like offered me like 12 times the amount I was earning. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, but like, I want to stay with these companies. So I just basically yeah. went back to the company. I was like, um, I think I'm supposed to be earning this much. And they were like, okay, yeah. And I was like, Should you don't want to tell me. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? But like, obviously there's no animosity between us, but yeah. it was just like, it was a learning lesson for me that, oh yeah. I was like, think back to it. I don't think I was supposed to be working for free back then. Yeah. <laughs> It's a lesson. I, I, yeah, that definitely happens to a lot of young people growing on Instagram and TikTok, just not really knowing how to monetize and what they there's, should there's be There's no charging. rule book. Yeah, it's a complete gray area. There's no, you should be earning this, you know, if you're a dentist, you know roughly how much you're supposed to be paid. Yeah. For an influencer, it's like, there's so many different variables. There's so many different companies with different budgets. Some companies won't go above a certain amount. doesn't matter how many followers you have. They go, no. Yeah. So then you think, oh, right, that's my cutoff. But then you go to another company and they've got loads of money and they're like, yeah, we'll give you that. So it's like your rates are always changing. You're trying to like, oh gosh, do I put that number in? Will they push away and not even reply? Or if I put that, will they be like, oh my gosh, that's such a bargain. So yeah. it's a real gray area. And I guess having a manager, manager, manager is good for that to know. But I also don't regret not having a manager. Okay, cool. Even though I probably could have been earning more, but I've Learned. earned 100% of my earnings. Yeah. yeah. Everything is mine. Yeah. No one's ever earned. That's interesting. And no one's ever though. put pressure on me because I can't. The only reason why I let Max work for me is because He's the only person in a manager role that I see fits with me because yeah. he knows if I'm crying that day and won't tell me to do a post. Whereas a manager could text me and be like, excuse me, where's your post and where's this and where's that? But they don't know that I'm in this like self-pity, you know. Yeah. So whereas Max is very much, he knows how I'm feeling emotionally and he can kind of like, he knows when to tell me things. He knows when to ask me to like, like right, check your phone. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. Sure, um, that's so yeah. You've used the term imposter syndrome quite a few times. Yeah. Is that something which you personally think you experienced or something which is a term which is used frequently within the online space and therefore is somewhat adopted by people? I'm just interested in your perspective. Yeah, no, I think I've got it's a, mixed a mixture. It. I yeah. think it is a mixture. But when I have really read into it, there's so many things in my past that have created that yeah. image. Like it's not just, oh, I just don't think I'm doing well. Like it is true. Like it is in my core that I'm not feeling what I've achieved and and yes whether that's how I was treated when I was younger teenagehood they have formed those beliefs of mine it's just something I don't really know how I get past I don't really know what I do <laughs> yeah I mean I think you have to be like not not like a psychopath but like 
to have like no to have like no element of doubt in yourself yeah. i think it's it's weird but it's it's the ability to push past that which i think is like the actual ability yeah, to have like no doubt that you know you're doing something wrong i think you'd you know i think you'd be a little bit odd really but i mean yeah there's definitely levels to what do that. you view it as <clears throat> like what what would you kind of what do you think is the mistake maybe in the online world that people just like throw around it as and what you actually classify it as well i mean in context of what we do all of our clients talk about imposter syndrome yeah like pretty much every day but it's always the people that aren't doing the work which is always interesting yeah, no, is so interesting. The, the people that we work with are the most successful and it's a totally different context because they're they're building a business with a different premise entirely but they they the, work, the ones that make close money work their ass off like yeah. absolutely so and they've and I was listening to a Homozy podcast, Alex Homozy. Do you guys watch yeah, him his content? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's here on side. Yeah, he was talking, and I've actually took it down here. He's talking about the fact that the most successful people he's met have a superiority complex, crippling insecurity that will never be enough, and impulse control, which is really interesting in terms of like the three balances. Yeah. So I think it ebbs and flows between per, uh, in each individual based on their own personal kind of opinion on things in terms of like the the element of superiority complex and then the kind of insecurities. But yeah, overarchingly, like the people that are the most successful I've met definitely have more of a superiority of complex and insecurities definitely yeah, but i wouldn't I, say that's yeah. like that's definitely like sociopathy or narcissism yeah but I, i've met narcissists i, but, I yeah. agree with like what you say with like the contrast because my mum could never figure this part out of me and i would always switch like when i was living at home for the first year while i was earning this amount of money sometimes i'd walk through the door and be like i don't even know what i'm doing like you know having all this like shame on myself and then the next day I'd be like, guess who's 19 and earning this much? I'm so, like, I would switch. Yeah. And when, and she would always try, like, try balance my ego. When I'd come in like that, she'd always go, Anna, calm down. Like, you don't want to be saying that. Be very humble. So she's taught me to be very humble. But then when I'm feeling low, it's like, it kind of gets that same attention of like, no, you're not feeling like that. So it's like, it's almost like my reality is always shifting. Like, sometimes I feel great about it. Sometimes I don't. But my mum would always be like telling me the opposite. So I, I think myself as well, I'm just like, I don't even trust myself of whether I feel amazing on top of the world or whether I don't, which is why I try just stay quite neutral, mm. even in what I'm doing. I'm just like, yeah, I'll take both. <laughs> yeah, well, I think it's both, isn't it? Definitely, it's all three variables that I just referred to. I think they contribute yeah, towards like, yeah, exponential growth quickly when you're young, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I think that was a big thing for me. It was like, cool. And then it was like, am I not supposed to always? Yeah, really? Go up. Yeah. Did that negate your growth? Is that a negative impact on your growth, you think? Because you started to be like, oh my God, what's going on here? Like, should that be happening or not? Yeah, Is yeah, definitely. I, I remember I remember having conversations with Sam. He's now left Gymshark, but Gymshark, like sponsorship manager. Mm. And we always used to WhatsApp, especially at the beginning of our relationship. And I'd be like, I went up 10K in three days. He goes, oh my God, that's amazing. I go, yeah, but last week I did it in two. And it was like, it was so, if I look back at our conversations, honestly, you wouldn't be able to understand them because it was like, I was, he would like be praising me for like going up, like literally so many followers in a couple of days. Yeah, I wouldn't really understand it. And it was just like, yeah, it's just odd for me to look back. And then, and then now it's like, obviously I'm quite neutral with it. Like I know growth comes with time and I'm not too fussed about growing so much, but yeah, definitely my expectations of where growth should be even what I'm doing now, I believe is not great. Yeah. But someone else would be like, oh, that's amazing. You're still going up. You're reaching people. You've got an engaged audience. You make sales. You've got connections. You've got community. Mm. But I'd go, yeah, but I'm not going like I was in the first five months. Just and like, do you take yeah. priority of your happiness now as opposed to previously? Or? Yeah, happiness and also the message I'm putting out. Yeah. Do I want to tell people to lose weight for the, like, my, my YouTube videos got like half a million, 300,000 because I said five ways to lose weight. Yeah. How to do i'm gonna get views what do i prioritize not putting that out on the internet and i'd rather do how to feel better or here's like a a more relaxed day in the life or here's a reality of me being emotional maybe that's gonna help people like a little bit more than just mm. getting them on a path to like lose weight and whatever so that's what i so would would you say previously when you were growing were you like obsessed with follow account and continuously growing your account and reaching more people was it an obsession I think because it was going so quickly yeah. it was just I was going along with the ride okay I wasn't checking it every two seconds to see if it had grown it was just like when I went on my account it would it just did it was an expectation okay. oh yeah it's gone up good yeah okay, okay. cool yeah yeah. Uh, yeah and 
they would, I think also like, it's like, oh, when you make your first million, like you'll feel like this. And when you get there, it's not actually that great. Yeah. It's like when I got to 100K, it was like, it was such a big number in my head for Instagram. And I got there and I was like, when's 250? Like, yeah. when's the quarter mill? Yeah. You know, it's, your, your expectations always, you never quite get there, which is why I'm just like, I should just be happy where I am. Because even if I do reach 300K on Instagram, I'm going to be looking for the 400. So just yeah. like, just, you know, did that, that, find that balance. Did that affect your mental health at all? Like, did you have any anxiety over social media? Oh yeah, and your I think. In there? Well, why I mean, did you delete TikTok or why did you stop posting yeah. TikTok? Was that a part of it? I, um, yeah, I didn't love the social media I was putting. I didn't. I didn't like the content I was putting out, mm. um, and I felt I just didn't have the motivation to put it out. And then what happened was, is I also had deliverables from companies to post a certain amount. One of my biggest things that I don't like to do on my social media is to have ad, ad, ad. Yeah, 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 you're not gonna find that. I don't like it. So for me, if I've got six TikToks I have to post, mm. I've got to make sure a couple are in between it. Yeah. So yeah. what would happen was, is I'd post a sponsored one, and I'd be brain dead what to post in between. I wouldn't care. No one was pushing me. I had no motivation. So I'd post a really crappy one, and then you know I put a bit of effort into my sponsored one, and then a really crappy one. So it's just like, what am I working for? Yeah. To like fill in the gaps of my sponsored posts. <laughs> yeah. It should be I want to be creating content, and oh we need to do a sponsored post because it's just, well, it fits and in. And then in the middle, you'd be like hours trying to find that middle one. To yeah, like jump it was on the, the trend. Scrolling. Yeah. Oh, really? You've got to find the trends. Yeah. So yeah, that's actually my next point. Then. So with content, how do you plan your content? Do you plan it all in advance? Like days and, or is it, do you, do you wing it? Like really? <laughs> no. Really wing it. At Basically. the moment, I'm probably at my most like winging. winging. Oh. Like I'm just trying to get to like next week. I've got basically like a personal assistant. There you go kind of well her name's Alex and she's basically going to be running my TikTok Instagram finding me the trends telling me what to post telling me what to film editing everything so I'm not going to have to do the behind the scenes stuff she's yeah. going to be scheduling I honestly can't keep up with the calendar like I can't yeah even like getting my sponsored out sponsored posts out it comes to like the 28th of the month and the company's like Anna are you gonna like post this month and I'm like yeah, I will get there. <laughs> so you don't have like a set frequency or cadence no. of posting? Oh or... gosh, no. I want to. And I know, I it's almost, I think the thing that gets my head most, I know exactly what I need to do. I know how to grow. Mm. I know what I need to post. I know how, I know, I know everything, but I don't do it. And I haven't done it for the last, I say five months. Yeah. I haven't done it. Why not? Um, inner struggle, inner motivation, lack okay. of, a lot of, a lot of internal stuff. But I'm, and, and, I, and I kind of rode with the wave instead of trying to fight it. Like, I know that this is just a little thing. And then it's been a couple of months in the work. And now next week, it's kind of a fresh start. I'm, I think because it's been a one-man production for so long, it kind of drained me. I yeah, think, you know, yeah, if you yeah. took on all the jobs that she did as well, you would slowly be like, I can't do this. No, I did everything on my own since 18. Yeah. Yeah, it was nuts. And it gets more and more. And then it comes more like, wow. So I think that's why for the last couple of months, I've really... I'm just figuring more stuff out myself, realizing as, yeah. as well. Yeah, you're trying to sort of moving away from you know your original weight loss all that stuff. We're yeah, sort Constantly of trying, trying to, to figure now out. Now we're do. trying to look at what the next thing is that we do want to post because it's like she has like a like a little small separate account that just says like if you're done, for, almost like it's like a personal Instagram and mm. yeah, it doesn't, doesn't other people follow. <laughs> yeah, 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 it doesn't doesn't come hard to put stuff on there. And so honestly, you, it's the most fun thing to post on because no one tell me what to do. I'm just like yeah. Yeah, I'll post this and this and then it comes Why don't you post that on your main though? What's the, what, in your opinion, what's the... Like, why don't I post that content? Yeah, yeah. yeah. it'd be like friends and just funny pictures, yeah. me and I my mean, it's towel. it's got 40,000 followers. So it's not like a tiny little... It's in your bio, right? Yeah, yeah. It's not like a tiny little It's private. It's got like 40,000 Yeah, no, it's got 40,000 followers. But I think, I don't know really It's so engaged. Like, it gets, sometimes it gets more likes than my fitness. So I don't understand why you wouldn't post that on your main then. Because like, I have just like more... Pictures, I guess, and I think I have this perception that's like, well, I guess if it's like a silly, if it's like, it's kind mm. of like the behind the scenes, like it's my breakfast, and then you love that though. I know, yeah, and I do post right, that on my stories and stuff. Yeah. Um, I guess I just don't think it's postable, like post. I think as well, we're like, well, obviously we're, we're moving to Bali, well, going for two months first, and then planning to go out after as well on like in a month. Yeah. And like, I think. You know, we're at El Dorado. It's just easy to take photos. You were when finding it way easier place. to take yeah, photos. Yeah. Whereas like, yeah. where we're living in the middle of Battersea, 
I'm like, mate, I don't even want to go outside, to be yeah. honest. And we've, like, taken photos <laughs> inside. Obviously, if you go to the park, it's lovely. But if you're just down yeah, 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 yeah. 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 like, like, well, rubbish street. everywhere. I was going to say, people pay fortunes to live here. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, know. <laughs> I know, that sounded really bad. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah it does sound but, great. Like, I think it's just, uh, we, we always talk about it as well, like, really appreciate and you know, grateful to be in London, but it's, not it's just us. not for us. Like, we want to be, like, on, like, beaches Aww. and, like, jungle, stuff like that. And I think... I keep saying it as well. I think Bali and all that will, will help us, like it will make content just flow more solve because it's things as we'll realize one, what you want. Yeah, post one of my and, things is I started living for content. Like I would be like, oh, let me go to yoga to get pictures for my Instagram. Mm -hmm. Let me go to the park and Max, can you take a picture because I need to post to my Instagram. So it was like I, the last months I've been living in London because of how my account is, not necessarily you guys because. You've got this business. Mine, is, the business is what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was living post by post, whereas I'm like, but when I go on holiday, I somehow have so many pictures and things to post, and I don't even stress because I'm like, I'm actually living. I'm enjoying myself. I'm in the sun. A few pictures are being taken. Oh, they're perfect. Chuck them on. Yeah. Instead of having to walk outside and then go get a picture, it's not a bit. It's just it doesn't work well. So yeah. like with Bali, I'm so excited to live life and some pictures and videos will be taken and I can post that. Yeah. So it's a lot more like true to myself and organic, I guess. But yeah. Yeah, it's just super interesting though because we've done the opposite like in terms of our perspective because we, we build a business first. Yeah. So it means that we have to like regulate every component of our business in terms of output. So scheduling all pieces of content, preparing it all in advance, scripting it word for word, yeah. editing it, getting it all outsourced, like everything is done. Yeah. So we'll do 20 or 30 reels on a go. But Script I think word for word, module, like everything's done. I admire yeah. that of you guys. Like I was stalking your account and I was like, oh, I need to do this. So I think it's like- You it's, grow, you blow up if you were to do oh, that. Oh, like, the thing is, that's the thing. I know exactly what to do. I know, yeah. I know, I know like I can see it. I just haven't had, one, the resources, the support I need mentally, whatever, physically mm. in terms of editing and just the right headspace. But like, I want to do it and, I, I, and I've done it and I've proved to myself I can do it. Um, and it's also about like changing with social media. Like I know Instagram's changing. Yeah. And if you stay sticking to what the old stuff of like always pictures and stuff like that, it, it's not working anymore. <laughs> yeah. You've got to yeah, be posting yeah. the reels and you've got to be done. posting the stories. And that's one thing for me. I haven't posted a reel in ages. No. But I need to though, because I yeah. know it's the way forward. Do you, do you see social media as a long-term thing that you're going to be on? Like, is there ever a point where you're kind of thinking like, I don't, I don't want to be on social media. I want to take a break from it. I don't yeah. want to be posting. I, and to I add think, to that, will it be fitness yeah. specifically or are you going to change it to a different, like more all-encompassing perspective in terms of your account? Yeah, I think with Anarch Fitness, I think people now know that it really isn't fitness. It's just kind of the name. Whether or not I change that or not, I think no. it's only because the username isn't available that I'm not. Okay. <laughs> I'm like, mm, well, I've got my private, but I don't know. And yeah, I do see it as a long-term thing. Yeah. But I see it as a thing that I know I can take breaks from. When I started social media, I could not take a, like a day off. I had to post every single day because I thought if you don't post for a day, you're gonna go down. Yeah. But then when I had a burnout, I took three months, I took two, three months off, and it was really hard for me. But then when I came back from it, I was like, so I can take days off. Yeah. I can take a week, I can take a weekend, I cannot post. So now it's like I know, let's say we want to have like a whole month off. I, I will take a whole month off social media if I want to do that. And yeah. I will be able to, but I do see it as a long term. It's kind of, I enjoy filming. Yeah. I enjoy YouTube. I enjoy sharing. It's just a bit of me. Yeah. So I do see it as like a long term thing, whether that's like when I buy a house or when I move well, or country or children. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, Max panics. <laughs> you know what I mean? I like one of those accounts. Yeah. He's like, yeah, he's oh. off as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> and have you, have you ever battled with like how you look on social media, comparing yourself to maybe other influencers, what they post, how they look? Does that say? Like, like I Do compare myself to like my housemate. Like when I lived yeah. in London, I really started comparing myself. My housemate is like a influencer, you know, same as me and whatever. And not just, sorry to but not just yeah. um, in the image, how they look yeah. in terms of work. Oh, what definitely, doing. definitely. Yeah. Look and what they do. Um, but Max has helped me try like go back to being more natural and being more me, which is me anyways. Like I had a phase where it was always like, 
you know, like fake lashes, you know, like yeah. just everything. Yeah. And then he's just kind of like, really? I couldn't imagine. I mean, yeah, you're so fake lashes, naturally tan. beautiful. I couldn't yeah. imagine. Everything. And then, yeah, yeah. Max was like, why don't you just like take them off? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I think, I, I think I met you with like, I think I met you with like, no was, lashes on. No, 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 no. I had fake lashes <laughs> on. Oh, you had, okay. I had fake but lashes, anyway. I had blonde hair, yeah. I had a tan, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was just like, I think they just look, look better off. Yeah, and then oh, that's sweet. Yeah. <laughs> and then in terms of content, yeah, definitely, because I know what I need to do. Other people are doing it, yeah. and I'm not. And I and I scroll, and I'm like, it's probably why I get anxiety on my phone. I'm like, Max, I don't want it. I'll literally throw my phone. I'm like, I don't want to see what other people are doing because mm. I will compare myself. Yeah. Why aren't I doing that? It's I'm not hard. growing as much. But not in but in the purely negative way or in a healthy way as well. Because like for example, yeah, there can be when we're looking at like what other people are doing, that drives me nuts. Oh, but I love dry. it. It, it yeah. drives like, us I'm crazy. I'm so competitive. We're like we sit there and we compare Analyze, our yeah. competitors. Yeah. And I'm just like to Billy, oh my god, I'm getting so frustrated. Like we're so much. We know so much more. We can deliver so much more value. Yeah. Like, well, no, yeah. I think it's great because you're able to, you know, you you said that you know more. Yeah. You've got more. So you just need to steal their little algorithm tips. That's all it is. You know, how long are their videos? What are they putting out? How are they, in the first three seconds, what are they saying? Yeah. It, it's stuff like that where you pick out, oh, okay. And that's like the healthy way to like compare and grab information. But then, and that's the same for me. Like if I'm scrolling, I'm like, oh, wow, I love this account. I save it. So I have this portfolio of how I kind of want myself to be. And I love picking inspiration. And it's a, but yeah, it, it's a yeah. driver. It's inspiring, yeah. especially if we see, because a lot of people in the space in terms of what we're doing, they are a little bit older and we're kind of so young in terms of other people and what they're doing. And it's a massive driver for us to be like, you know, if they're doing it, like we can do it and yeah. we can do so much more. I think so it's like, more. you can either look at it like personally or like from an outside view. Yeah. Like you guys yeah, are looking no, at it from get... like an objective, right, what do we need to do to do that? Whereas like... Yeah. If Anna's then looking onto it, she's like, God, this girl looks better than me. Yeah. Or like, yeah, it's, it's different. Or like they're yeah, doing, yeah. oh, they're actually but editing. You can, yeah, like, like, but you can like take the emotion out of it. Like, yeah. right, right. What type yeah, of business is she doing? that's what Max helps me do. Yeah, I'm like, it's, you've got to think of yourself as a business. Like, yeah, no, that's what I was going to say. Like, two different perspectives. Yeah. Yeah. Like, we're, we're business purely. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Well, well, no, when, I, when I am. We're working yeah. on business, but I can relate definitely as a woman on Instagram and looking, going through, because, oh. Oh. His back. <laughs> definitely i mean his i was kind of down. doing some sort of i don't know i don't even know what i was doing with my fitness account just posting random stuff here or there and yeah. no big intentions really um but definitely i went through loads of phases of looking at other people on that and other girls and being like oh my god like why don't i look like that or how do they uh, you know and it, yeah. it really gets into your head and i went through a tough time with it and i think until i actually started to you know think about what actually do I want out of life and who do I want to be and what what do I want to yeah it's all about you know creating yourself like there, what's yeah. your self-worth yeah, I can so well. easily yeah. go on the top gym shot girls yeah. and compare myself but I just don't because I'm just like I've, I've got to do things me yeah, yeah I've got, exactly just like, you can always appreciate yeah they're doing that but I und completely understand from your business perspective of like right we need to do this to be them but yeah. at the end of the day I'm not even going to try do yeah. what they're I'm actually going to do my thing your thing yeah, yeah no, my thing, definitely that it's will make me approach. different in terms of fitness you know girl fitness influencer yeah, yeah. yeah but it's so important to have that slight keep up with the trends and know how to make it trending yeah, yeah. but then make it your own which i think is how yeah. like finally we'll, we'll wrap up soon as well but how, how do you guys educate yourself i'm intrigued both from a perspective of like the personal development yeah. aspect of things if you were to call it that and then also in terms of what you're going to do next in life or with business or monetization of things like what do you guys look at as resources or what's the priority yeah well you youtube YouTube? YouTube's yeah, quite really a big good. One. And, and books, really. Yeah, we yeah. read a lot. We have our ones. Kindles. Yeah, we're not into, well, not that we're not into it, but we haven't delved into like the like buying courses or anything yeah. like that. No. Yeah. So you, you watch YouTube, Anna? Yeah, I watch, yeah. Like, we love our little productive YouTube sessions. Yeah. We call yeah. it. That's we're interesting. Like... <laughs> we're actually uh, talking about the stats on YouTube viewers, whether yeah, it's well, male or female, yeah. what sort of content do people watch, yeah. long form or short form? Well, also, you, you started YouTube later than your other socials, right? Yeah, well, it was about a month or two after. Oh, really? So it wasn't? Yeah, okay. it, but it did. But I was really inconsistent, like yeah. not post for six months. Okay. And then like yeah, post yeah. again. But only recently have I become consistent. But another thing that, you know, we say we haven't done courses, but I still go to therapy and it's one of the best things ever. I think honestly, one of the biggest, you read it in self-help books. If you don't take action, you don't act, you know, you can read as many as you want. Yeah. 
Yeah. But like when I go to therapy, I'm learning so much about myself, my past self. I'm, I'm listening to a wiser woman telling me, you know, mm. you know, when you do this, it's about this. It's made me figure out so much. I honestly think that's one of the biggest things that have allowed me to develop as a person. Yeah. And whether or not it's like when you crash and you do it and you take therapy or whether you do it as preventative. Yeah. Why don't I find out about myself before something major happens yeah. or like before I crash or stuff. So then I kind of like brush my therapy lessons onto Max and I'm like, so how are you feeling about <laughs> this? And, and I'm like, yeah. what about? So I kind of like, you know, yeah. I know not everyone can do it, but I think in terms of money yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Um, but I think there are ways, I think, yeah, that self-awareness and yeah. digging into yourself and just even like journaling. Yeah. It's such like a, not unspoken, but it's like, oh, journaling, that's so whatever. But I think it's one of the best things because it's like, you really, you put it down pen to paper. Yeah. Yeah. So the dynamic of your guys' relationship is actually quite interesting, I find. And I want to ask actually, Max, yeah. how you found meeting Anna and, you know, having the career and social platform that she does and being so crazy about personal and business development. <laughs> yeah. How was that as a man? Oh, I liked a woman it. Like that? Yeah, I liked it. But I always had the like vision in my head of like my like girl that I was with, like wanting yeah. to do those things as well. So okay, I was like... Okay. It, so it was, was always that. It was yeah, always it, it was always there. That. And I think that's why it like did, you know, go on further again. Quite, from, quite quickly, I think. Yeah, yeah, and you were also like into your like health and fitness and stuff like that. And, you know, I, I liked the fact that she was into like her business. So, so what I, I said, said to you at the beginning, you know when you said on the podcast? No, what did you say? <laughs> no, it was just like when we started dating, yeah. the first thing I said to him was like, um, by the way, my business comes first and like I have to yeah. be emotionally oh, yeah, yeah. okay every day. So if yeah. you're going to cause me more problems, if you're going to cause me boy problems, I'm yeah. not having it. And he was like, okay. I was wait, like, wait, you can't make me upset. Did you say that? Like on the first so, like, day? No, like, no, like near the beginning. One week? Yeah, oh my God, I love that. Yeah, I was just like, I, no, I said yeah, it in like yeah. a nice way-ish. But I was firm. I was like, yeah. look, I have to be emotionally okay to like film myself every day and whatever. So like, if you're going to come around here and cause some drama, I was like, this isn't the place. He was like, yeah, no, that's fine. <laughs> yeah, I think I've always just said that I want someone with their own life yeah. as well. But, and that doesn't yeah. mean we can't work together, but it's like, you know. Motivated. Yeah. Are you able to like go out and just do something by yourself or, yeah. I don't know, has your own, like the thing you had your own thing going on, I thought that was cool. Like, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So you like yeah. that in a woman? I, I You're like not that, kind yeah. Of like, you know, because some people oh, yeah, grow like, up mm. and they kind of want to be like a housewife yeah, and yeah. not, you know, Which, I mean, do much you know, You like if, that? Yeah, I, I prefer that you know, you do things. Yeah. And like, I do most of the house washing. Like, yeah, honestly. Like, cleaning, he's like more cleaning. cooking. Like, <laughs> you're right there, like, crusty heel. I'm not, like, crying. Or, I'm like, right. That's spicy, baby. Right, yeah. Oh, my God, I don't have a crusty heel. You need a tally <laughs> count for crusty heel. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh. yeah, no, I, 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 I've, you know, I guess you could say quite fluid in terms of, like, gender roles or whatever. Oh, yeah. Like, just, like, but, like, that's I'm good on like, him as well. Like, yeah, that's I think, if anything, thing. it's, like, but like, the fact just, that he's you know, stable himself. Yeah. At like, the same time, like, if people don't do that, I, yeah, you know, and the man goes out and earns loads of money and, yeah. you know, or doesn't earn loads of money, whatever. If that works for them, it exactly. works for them as what well. It just for, for them works for them. I, I agree with that, definitely. Our, yeah. our roles kind of, I mean, we have a good balance in terms of work and personal. I mean, I do all the cleaning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Billy doesn't do anything. I'm thinking about he doesn't do any of the cleaning, yeah. but... Um, like, yeah, I have massive ambition and to yeah. achieve, you know, crazy things. And we're both kind of on a similar level like that. And we work perfectly fine together. Going back to the point earlier about people's opinions on working together in a partnership and in a relationship and kind of what they think, touching on that. Again, we don't really have any issues with that at all. No, but we haven't got like overwhelming egos yeah <laughs> either but it's like yeah. that the whole premise of our relationship was built upon the foundation of we wanted to build something together yeah it's a, like shared, a, a shared common goal like we yeah. both yeah. had that vision and we're which like, i found so like hilarious as well because i've got so many mates that are the total opposite of that yeah, yeah. it's absolutely fine like for them yeah. but they just couldn't understand the premise of me wanting to actually give equal authority to britney yeah no, which no, i thought I, was really yeah. interesting so yeah. i found that i definitely think there's like a like a stereotype kind of, no but there's like a wave now of like like bringing back alpha you know, male yeah male yeah. Role, yeah, which definitely. I like I, I do think there are differences in men and women like don't get me wrong like you know on, on the whole though but I think this yeah. whole like alpha male stuff is like there's a flat and you know there's a cut and dry rule for all men or women and like there's no different and like I'd, I don't really I, don't, I personally don't like 
subscribe to that. I feel no, no, neither. But I think yeah. that's yeah, that's making your own decision though, isn't it? Ultimately, informing yourself yeah. of different different opinions. But exactly. Yeah, we've got so, like Brittany knows them as well. My my a few of my close mates, yeah. they'll be like, no, I can never God. do that. Yeah. Ever. Like when we used to sit down and like have dinner together, I'd go out and be like, oh my God, I could <laughs> never be your girlfriend. But no, But the hilarious so... thing is they're like riddled with insecurity in terms of like wanting to make money and flaunt it. And then they'll be like, oh, the girl's only with me for money. Like, she's like, yeah. yeah. No, and I'm like, well, you attracted it, didn't yeah, you? Yeah. yeah. Well, like, that's just so yeah, stupid. That's like, like what we talk about as well. Like a lot of, well, a lot of what we talked about yesterday is like, we were in very similar situations where we met each other. Obviously, we didn't know each other, but we're like, yeah. it's that other sort of like weird manifestation, hippy dippy thing. Like you attract, <laughs> like yeah, what but, you put out there. Yeah. There were yeah. stages. Yeah, like, I did want a girl from when I met. Yeah, yeah. exactly. No, yeah. But I like, I remember like a week before I met Max, I was saying to my housemate, I was like, I'm finally done. I don't need a boy. Like, I don't need men. That's what I said to her. <laughs> and then it was like a week later, it was like, it presented me with like this guy. And I was like, oh, okay. But it's only until like I said it to myself that like, I don't need them and I'm fine without yeah. them. And I don't need to, whatever. Then it comes to, it's almost like whatever headspace you're in, if you are in that, you know, when I was 17, I was a very insecure, closed off person. I attracted a very toxic boyfriend. You're going to attract the fact that you were at a certain point in your career and you were oh, feeling good and you were motivated. And so were you, there's like a reason why you found each other and not when you yeah. were 15 and you didn't know you were in, you know, it's like you do find each other on different levels and that's why, self-improvement is actually one of the best things ever because the more you improve yourself, mm. the more you're going to attract people on that kind of wavelength, which I know you guys yeah. know about. So. Yeah. Anything else it's, dive it's, into? it's a big topic to discuss that. We, we chatted a lot. Oh, yeah. 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 You know, I'm... I'm <laughs> It's hot in here as well. It's hot. I need a dinner. Like, oh, right. My shin's like dead. Yeah, yeah. I, like, I, I couldn't move my foot. I was like, huh? I'm moving about. Le- like, Leo <laughs> over here as well. Leo's just... Leo's just loves chilling. Feel my sweat. Ooh. He just loves chewing. Oh, lovely. Yeah. <laughs> the well. so no, but it's been a pleasure, guys. Yeah, no, no, it was thank good. You so good. That was yeah, good. Yeah, 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 good first one. Yeah. That went really quickly. Good. Yeah. But yeah, if, I mean, fun. obviously, if you guys watching this haven't followed Anna, follow Anna, obviously. She's got a big, <laughs> way bigger following than us. But yeah, anyway, if you guys come across this and want to obviously check out all of her content, yeah, definitely dive into it. it. And yeah, you guys are going to smash Barley. It's going to be sick. It's really? Yeah, I've got a new chapter. No work done now, I'm being honest. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't find that some. I got no work done. Yeah. Yeah. Work. We're, yeah. I did nothing for the month. And you're kind of like, Billy's the type of person where he needs to be in a room dark. I'm so like, OCD. Oh, it's <laughs> crazy. Yeah. Though. I can't have like the curtain has to be closed. Yeah. Kind of. You're the door has Yeah, I've got a neon light in the back. It's like, I go in and it's like this dungeon. I'm like, Okay. Yeah, man. Oh my god, yeah, I'm yeah, there like no. pulling Max out every 20 minutes. I'm like, you need sunlight. Yeah, it's good for you. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. No, I'm like, yeah. no one can speak to me. <laughs> no, I'm like wow. seriously. That works for him though. I'm kind yeah. of similar. I need to like go outside, get breath of yeah. Fresh yeah, no, air, Bali though. It's just like it's such a sick place. It's my favorite place in the world for sure. But yeah. I was like, when I was, there, I was like, I want to be on holiday. I don't want to do yeah. any work. I want to go yeah. to the beaches. And everyone was chilling. Yeah, like, no, you know, for me, the work is filming. Yeah, yeah so it. it's different. I'd sit down at a desk and be like... I mean, that's exactly the point <laughs> I was making. It's a yeah. different kind of work. Yeah, no, so our sure. environment, if we were to go on holiday like that, we'd have to... That's have, like, totally different. Yeah, it's yeah. like the environment trumps it. And I think that's why we, yeah, find it hard to like do kind of things. Because the environment that we're in is just not what we... It's not creative. It's not what we're No, it's not creative. And it's like... found it so easy at Eldorado. It's like taking pictures, came back, got everything. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, loads of posts. Like, too many posts. Yeah, honestly, yeah. I was like, oh my gosh, it's I don't like, know what to these pictures. Three, like, mountains of stories. <laughs> and it was like, you know, we just went away for like, to a field for four days. Yeah, like, I know. Do you know what I mean? Come back here and it's like... Yeah. We need to yeah. create a festival. We're, we're hopefully going on holiday. No, Brittany won't count. At the end of the... Oh, we, yeah, we, glamped. Glamped. Oh, we glamped. We glamped. Oh, okay, glamped. So, you glamped. Okay. That, that's, that's all right. That's all right.